If you're planning to get lucky this St. Patrick's Day, get prepared with Manscaped. Manscaped is the global leader in below the waist grooming and an official sponsor of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. To ensure you have the best tools for your family jewels, visit manscaped.com and use discount code DIGGINGDEEP20 for 20% off and free international shipping. Manscaped is here to provide you with the best tools for your grooming experience, offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels. The Lawnmower 3.0 electric trimmer is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. Ceramic blade, advanced skin safe technology, waterproof capabilities, it's simply the best. And Manscaped's performance package is the best buy of 2021. The performance package comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, performance boxer briefs, a travel bag, deodorant, and soothing aloe toner. If you're listening, you know good tools are key. So get the best tools for the job today. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20. Welcome to the Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast with your host, two-time defending ATV motocross national champion, Cody Jensen. Am I on air? What's up, everybody? We're We're back. back. I'm your host, Cody Jansen, and welcome to another exciting episode, episode number 48 of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, presented by our title sponsor, CST Tires, available for purchase at shop.csttires.com. The wait is finally over. We're just days away from the start of the 2021 ATV Motocross National Championship season, which will kick off inside Daytona International Speedway next Tuesday. And in this episode, we'll cover every feasible topic and storyline heading into the new season. Gloop Mayhe of Rip It Up Films and Casey Greek of Impact Solutions will both join us momentarily. Two guys who are as plugged into ATV racing as anyone. So I'm stoked to talk to those two guys and hear everything they know about these AMA ATV Pro Class riders as we head into the Daytona ATV Supercross. We're going to cover an array of topics. We'll touch on all the top riders, cover some off-season news, the 2021 schedule, give our predictions for Daytona and the championship, preview our Digging Deep ATV MX fantasy picks, and so much more. So just a reminder, you can sign up to play Digging Deep ATV MX fantasy along with us at atvfantasy.com and lock in your picks for Daytona today. Thanks to everybody that signed up already. The response has been incredible. Thanks to you guys for tuning in to another podcast with us again tonight. And thanks to our sponsors who make this show possible. CST Tires, go to shop.csttires.com. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Four Works Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Factory 43, Bike Strikes and Quads LLC, and Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Their clippers rock, their nose hair trimmer is amazing, and they have a bunch of other cool stuff as well. So check out Manscaped. I wish I would have sooner. Get 20% off with free shipping by using code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Support all these great companies that support us, and for any products that fall through the cracks, click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website to help us out. The season is right around the corner. We'll be racing before you know it, and we both know you need parts and gear. No matter what off-road gear or parts you need, Rocky Mountain ATV MC has you covered. So before you buy, click that Rocky Mountain ATV MC banner on our website to help us out. Now the 30 second board is up, it's sideways, and the gate is down. Time to dig deep. Let's go. All right, guys, you know it's just about time to go racing when you hear these two voices. First up, brought to you by Valvoline, the original motor oil Check out their full line of products at Valvoline.com today from Impact Solutions. Say hello to Mr. Casey Greek. What's up, Casey? Thanks for being here once again. Hey, Cody. Thanks for having me back on. It seems like we're getting comfortable with this and uh, being able to do more and more of these shows as we can and, you know, try to 
continue with uh, valid points and some fictional points here today. I think it's going to be exciting with this new uh, fantasy. I'm uh, super excited about it. I actually signed up today. Felt bad that I took as long as I did to sign up, but it wasn't. It was never even a question in my mind. Yeah, well, obviously, super, uh, super grateful that you wanted to get on board with us here. Obviously, always grateful to have you. Um, last time you told me you're always here to stir the pot. So uh, excited, excited for more of that tonight. Also joining us tonight, brought to you by our friends at Yamaha and their race ready YFZ 450R. Go to YamahaBlueCrew.com, follow at Yamaha Outdoors on social media, and check out Yamaha's full off road lineup today at YamahaOutdoors.com. It's Rip It Up Films himself, Mr. Gloop Mayhe. Thanks for coming back brother yes thanks for having me um kind of excited to get this season kicked off i think it's it, it this all season went by too fast but uh, i'm excited to talk about it and talk about new riders and new things and uh it should be exciting at daytona Absolutely, man. I, I was just telling somebody this today. I can't believe it's March already. And I would have thought that this off season would have been a slower one based on, you know, with the, with the waves of the world right now, with everything going on, I thought this off season was going to be, you know, slow. And, uh, you know, I don't, again, I don't know about you guys, but I can't believe we're less than a week away from racing. Um, first gate drop is less than a week away. Uh, first gate drop of 2021. And I know each of, of you guys, each of, each of all of us, I guess all of us have been working uh, diligently preparing for this, uh, you know, this season to start in our own ways, all doing different aspects of the sport, but um, preparing like crazy for this upcoming season. And I know you two have been spending a bunch of time with the guys that we're going to talk about on this episode, this preseason, uh, preseason season preview episode that we got going on here. So I want to start by uh, getting a feel for what you guys have been up to in recent weeks. And Casey, I'm pretty sure, you know, you spent the day today working with one of our main title contenders, um, I believe. So tell us about uh, everything that you've been up to as Daytona nears. Yeah, it was cool today. You know, we're down here in Southern Florida, closer to Jeffrey and Joel. And both Jeffrey and Joel came out, Blair Miller come out and uh, we rode at Mesa and super hot today and really, really rough track. And the, you know, the plan of attack was to go out there and kind of start working with Joel and dialing him in, making sure he had everything in Nate needed for uh, obviously Tuesday. And um, in all reality, I never even changed a clicker. So it was an easy day for me on that side. Worked with Blair a little bit. I'm going to work with Jeffrey a little bit tomorrow. A couple other guys are going to come out tomorrow. A couple more guys on Thursday. And then we're going to kind of revisit at a different track on Friday with Joel and Jeffrey and shake down race bikes. But so far, so good. I mean, everyone seems to be pretty good. Um, unfortunately, my plans kind of changed. I was going to go to Decker's and uh, to the Decker training facility. Really, I was excited to go there. What an awesome facility. And everyone was there. But the way the weather was shaken down, it looked like um, it would kind of inhibit a couple of days of testing. And I don't get to do this as often as I would love to mm -hmm. do. So I had to kind of pull an audible it's uh it's working out it's gonna be okay um a lot of guys still stayed at deckers that i would have loved to train or you know work with and test with but it didn't get to work out but man joe looked good jeffrey he was on fire it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting year for sure uh, it's exciting. I mean, I'm so pumped to talk about it here uh, over the next, uh, next course of the next little while here. Um, but it's crunch time for sure. I think for, for so many people, obviously in your role and uh, Gloop too, you know, with all the, the media stuff he does and Gloop, I feel like you've been all over the place. Um, you've been with a bunch of uh, guys, um, you know, leading up to the season here. Take me through the, what you've been up to over the course of the last month or two. Uh, I was supposed to be down here early January. I got this uh, crazy thing they call COVID <laughs> that uh, that sucked and took me down for a couple weeks. Um, came down here late January to Decker training facility. Um, been here since pretty much the mo most of the, uh, most of the time I've been here. And then we took a week uh, trip down south. So went and filmed with Joel Jeffrey, saw those guys ride. Uh, we went to a couple different places down there with uh, Stanfield and Myers. And basically I've seen almost everybody ride, but a couple guys that are on the, on the roster right now. 
yeah, I knew, I knew that you had uh, been around, you know, most of all the riders that we're dealing with. And that's why uh, it was a perfect opportunity to get you both on, you know, Casey's obviously plugged into so much stuff and, and uh, you too, Gloop. I mean, watching the, the rip it off films videos, uh, I was thinking the same thing. You basically filmed just about everybody that's going to be, that's going to be lining up a week from now. So um, super proud to have you both join me. I feel like we got a bunch of good, uh, you know, knowledgeable people here to talk ATV motocross. And I want to start uh, big picture and look at the, the 2021 season schedule. Um, you know, we obviously have Daytona next week, then a, a month break, um, a return to three palms, another month break after that back to high point for the first time since 2018. Um, Aonia pass is back for 2021 sunset Ridge is again, a staple of the series in the Midwest pleasure Valley also back after returning to the schedule last season, Unadilla excited to see them back on the schedule, the legendary red bud Loretta Lynn's returns this next season. And finally the season concludes with a return to Bri Briarcliff, which as many of you know, is in Ohio for the first time since 2014, that'll be the, the season finale. Um, so guys, what do you think about the 2021 schedule overall? I like it. Um, but I, I think the biggest surprise for me is what it's missing. There's no muddy Creek, which was, uh, they've had an ATV national at muddy Creek for forever. Um, you know, there's no Crawfordsville, which for people from the Midwest, like me, that's a bummer. Um, you know, those really stood out to me. Uh, what about you guys? Do you have any thoughts on the schedule, you know, for this upcoming season, as we look at it as a whole, before we dive into more specific stuff? I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like it. No, go ahead. I'm <laughs> sorry. I like it personally. Cause I like, like you said, you know, you want Ironman cause it's Midwest, but I got a lot Tra a lot of tracks that are closer to me this year i'm the one man band in the van so like driving to these rounds by myself uh you know 14 16 18 hour trips you know aren't that fun so i'm excited for the schedule i'm excited to have uh you know briarcliff back we haven't been there and uh you know the owner's a quad guy so i think that'll be awesome yep absolutely um, high points always fun uh, i mean it's cool to be back there again and then i really liked texas last year so it's awesome to have them back as well Absolutely. You can jump in there, Casey. Yeah, I'm kind of with glute besides it's opposite for me on uh, location wise, me being in North Carolina, the shop being in Ohio. When we get into the summer months, I usually get to stay in North Carolina a little bit more. And so last year with like uh, Lake Sugar Tree being in Virginia, it was two hours south of the border it was only a couple hours. Georgia's close. Muddy Creek was close. So a lot of the closer ones to me went away this year. But I like the tracks that are in. I, I will miss Crawfordsville. I think that was a good race. Um, you know, Muddy Creek. I've always liked Muddy Creek. Obviously, um, I don't have to race it. So it's a little bit different in that sense because these guys got to race it. And, you know, you, you're a racer yourself, Cody, so you have to race it. And I think that was where some of the friction came in. Some guys were kind of over it in a sense. So nothing that they did wrong, but you know, some change is good. And I think it breathes life back in. I'm excited to go back to Texas. I think, um, three palms was a great facility. The, the owners, D man chat, you know, those guys, they did a great job facilitating that race. Um, I really would have liked to see Lake sugar tree back on the schedule. Cause I think, you know, they did a great job facilitating us and trying to cater to bringing us in. Um, but High Point's going to be super cool again. I really like the track. Obviously, it's a um, hometown race for Joel, Gloop. <laughs> These guys can throw rocks to that place. So it's going to be good for them. And um, it's always a good racy, you know, more hard pack, a lot of off camber, mm -hmm. you know, really sweet track. So I'm excited. And we still have our stables. We still have Loretta's. We still have um, Red Bud. A lot of good tracks left on the on the schedule so it's going to be good for us absolutely no i think that the the tracks themselves um the the track list is really good i mean like you guys both touched on three palms i thought was a really amazing place high point i'm super excited that the series is going back there because we went there in 2018 um and it was the best high point i've ever seen you know, for the, with the track changes and everything that they did there, I thought it was amazing. Um, so super glad that the series is going back to high point. Um, and then, then, yeah, I mean, I always, uh, you know, I love Unadilla. I mean, Loretta's is, is legendary. Great to be going back there. And then Briarcliff too, like you guys talked about, um, you know, I feel like that is a, 
feel like that was, uh, I really liked it the first time around 2014. And when you have a ATV friendly owner, when you have, you know, an ATV guy that owns the place, I mean, you know, that this is his Super Bowl, So uh, they're going to do as much as they can to, um, you know, to make it a, a great experience for us. Do we, so do we know, uh, I guess, Casey, you kind of touched on it, but is that what happened is, you know, maybe uh, there was guys that didn't want to go to those tracks anymore. Or was there more politics involved to, you know, why we, why we're kind of going away from the muddy Creek and Crawfordsville. Do we know anything about that? Can we touch on anything uh, regarding that? I, as, as the way I heard it and it's just speculation and rumor, I have no real result behind it or factual information behind it. But it was basically like they kind of started asking the riders and the riders sort of veered away from Muddy Creek. So um, I didn't get to go to the banquet this year. I didn't get to go to the meeting and and sit in those. Gloop may have a little bit better information. I think he was there, but I I didn't get to make it this year. I I was not at the banquet this year, so I didn't hear anything uh, as well. (laughs) Did they have a pro meeting there? I didn't. I don't even know. I, I doubt it. I assume if they did anything, it was via Zoom, you know, but uh, I, th- I think there may have been a Zoom a Zoom meeting, but uh, either way, just something I didn't want to pass by without at least asking the question if we had any yeah. more info there. But uh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, if there's guys that, that want to go to some other tracks, um, we'll tie it up with this thought. I mean, I think that that roster of tracks is as good as you're going to find. I think that uh, those are all, all people that were happy to have us back. And I like that. I did really like Lake Sugar Tree. I wanted to touch on that too. Uh, they were really accommodating to us wish they would have got another chance but maybe they will will in the future so um as we look to the season opener which uh you know has now been hosted by daytona international speedway for a number of years um you know, I want to dive right in here and say, you know, Chad Weenan uh, has to enter as the favorite, right? He's won, he's won four of the the six years at the Daytona ATV Supercross. He won uh, this event last year. He's the defending champion. Um, he is 36 years old now, but he was the best we've ever seen him last year. I don't think there's any denying that. So uh, do you guys expect him to just keep getting better with age, like the ATV motocross version of Tom Brady? Or what are we expecting for uh, Chad Weenan? you know, in this season and and beyond. You want to hop in there, Gloop? All right. I I think Chad needs to go first. (laughs) Yeah. No, Chad, I mean, Chad has it figured out. Like, obviously, uh, Chad knows what he's doing. He's done it long enough. Um, He's constantly improving the program with, you know, adjusting and trying out new things. Um, Obviously a favorite going to Daytona. Obviously a favorite every race. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure he will do good and well and awesome. Um, but there's a lot of factors with all these new guys coming in that could mix things up in the way of anything could happen at Daytona and anything does happen at Daytona, not specifically to Chad, but in general. So Mm -hmm. who knows to, for me, I don't, you know, we can say like last year, I felt like it wasn't that exciting. Then it was, there was only little parts that were exciting in that race. Yep. So, and we've had previous years that were really exciting. Mm-hmm. So it, Daytona is this, it's Daytona. So I don't really know predictions wise what can happen there. And uh, obviously Chad's going to do good. How about you, Casey? Yeah. I mean, Chad's always a factor. And um, I think as long as he's swinging a leg over the quad and in a professional, you know, stance of being a, being a top guy, like Chad don't, Chad's not going to race when he's not a top guy. Like, once he thinks he's not competitive anymore, like, he's not dumb. Like, he knows what he's here for. He puts in the work and he does his thing, so he's going to step away when he feels like he gets to that point that he may not be competitive anymore. So, Chad's always a factor. Um, his consistency is proven through and through here at Daytona, but it is a one-off deal, and it's something that we've seen so much extreme, you know, from one side to the other, the guy that we just – you know, was sheer the fastest guy that day, not be the winner. Mm -hmm. And the guy that, you know, we really didn't expect to win, come in and knock everyone's socks off and win. We've seen podium guy, you know, Alan Myers last year, podium. No one, and it's not a a bad thing on Alan, but no one really went into Daytona last year thinking Alan's going to be a podium guy. Mm -hmm. And he went out and put it on the box. You know, Brandon Hogue won a heat race, you know, like – it's Daytona. So that's the coolest part of this race in general. Yep. Um, 
it's not your status quo where when we can go to so many tracks and go, yeah, this is Chad's track or this is Joel's track or this is, you know, someone, you know, it, it's completely different there because we don't know what it's going to end up being. We don't know what the tracks can develop like. And the start is always very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, maybe I should have framed it like this is, is there a possibility that Chad Weenan takes another step forward because last year he found ways to improve his program and become better than he had been in previous years. Is there a chance that we see Chad take a step forward than, than, you know, what he was last year, even. I would have bet money last year having this conversation that Chad wasn't necessarily going to take a back a step backwards but I didn't see Chad making the improvements. And I watched Chad ride many times before the season ever actually started. Mm -hmm. And there was no way I would have, I would have positively absolutely bet money that Chad was not going to be the guy he ended up being. And again, I will never count Chad out of anything, but it was just what I had seen. I didn't see the flair that I thought he needed to be having. Mm -hmm. And then when he come out, just firing on all cylinders, I, I mean, I put my foot straight in my mouth. Absolutely. Right then, I was like, wow, this guy, he's hes in his prime. So um, can he do it again this year? Absolutely. I, I will never doubt him. I will never second guess myself again and say, oh, man, I, I, think, I think Chad's, you know, with a kid or this or that or whatever it is, softened up or, you know, mellowed out or he's thinking more now. No, the dude's, he's got it. Agreed. I mean, he, he even admitted to us that he had won the championship in at times and he felt like he wasn't the best guy, but he was able to, you know, to get the title. And last year he felt like he was the strongest guy and he won that title and he took a lot of pride in that. Um, so Gloop, you've spent a little time around Chad this off season, right? So, um, you know, give us the lowdown on how he's looking and, and I guess what expectations you have. Could he take a step forward? That's how I originally should have framed that question to you. Um, I mean, again, it's Chad, like he's, the guy's not sitting down. He's smooth. He, he looks fast, but he, you know, if you watch any other rider, they look faster than him just because of how they're riding It's but it's Chad, like, you know, lap times don't lie. So, um, him being here at Deckers and I don't think I've seen him sit down like one time. I, I don't even remember him sitting down when he, when he rode his two motos here, but, uh, I, I don't know. How much more, how much faster can you really get? You know, like that's my thing is how much faster can Chad really get? And also who can, who can, you know, have that speed with Chad as well. So there's a lot of guys that a lot of, I mean, I mean, Brandon Hogue looks really fast. Bryce Ford looks really fast. So but when those guys are riding, they look not necessarily faster, but the way they ride is it looks faster. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Chad's Chad. So, right. Well, and we kind of know that, you know, over the years, him and Joel have just been a, a step better. But I think those guys are coming. I truly, you know, this season, I really believe that there may be more unknown this season than than ever before. Um, and that's what's going to be exciting. So Chad Ween is the defending champ. He's looking to tie Gary Denton's record with, uh, you know, his next title, um, if you were to get it. But you have to believe Joel Hedrick is going to do everything he can to stop that from happening. Uh, you know, we know that the headlines by now Phoenix racing is now riding Yamaha's now running CST tires. Um, you know, Joel sure seems like he's raving about this new setup. Both of you guys have spent some time with him this off season. You know, what are your thoughts and predictions going into Daytona and beyond when it comes to Joel Hattrick? Because, you know, I, I have kind of been wrestling with this thought of, you know, is there going to be, you know, some growing pains to him being on a new machine and everything, but man, and now it seems like we're already used to him being on a Yamaha. We've seen all the videos. We've seen all the rip it up films stuff footage of him riding. Um, it seems like he's one with that machine right now. And it also seems like maybe he feels like he can ride that machine harder than he, than he had, you know, maybe rode the Honda because he feels like he doesn't have to save it. Um, you guys have been around him. So fill me in on, on Joel Hattrick Gloop will start with you. Um, I, you know, I feel like, like, uh, we could, I, th I feel like there's a good chance. He's the gnarliest we've ever seen him, uh, coming out this season. I think he's going to be a, a man on a mission. 
Yeah, um, Joel's Joel's absolutely killing it. Like to make a stock quad work like a race quad. You know, when I went and filmed with him, it was he he only had a stocker. Um, he had some trouble with something on his race or practice race bike, but uh, okay. him on the stocker, I mean, it was insane. Like, you know, bare minimum, nothing done to it. You know, the, the, within the you know changes, change that. But he was flying, and he he really does like the Yamaha right now. And I think he's driving with it. And I mean, that that's right there is the top two guys you're going to see. I mean, I don't think they're ever going to leave the podium this year. Right. Yeah. How about you, Casey? Yeah. I mean, a lot of what I've seen today was um, we've seen Joel for so many years be the fastest guy, you know, multiple times a season or, you know, in preseason, you watch him ride and you're like, yeah. But he looked, and I and I sat with him today, like on a little bench there at the track, and we were watching uh, Blair Miller ride and Jeffrey ride. And I said, the thing that I noticed right now is I feel like your output of effort is minimal compared to what your output of effort was on your previous machine, and I and I mean that by when the bike moves he don't have to try to move like it just flows together. And that's one thing that I've always noticed with Dustin Wimmer back in the day with Dustin, Dustin moved with the machine. He flowed with the machine. Then when Chad kind of caught his, you know, stride and started doing his thing. I mean, if we remember back to Chad, you know, a lot of times I call him the dungy of ATV motocross and, and things like that. But when Chad started hitting that stride, he started to move with that machine. And what I'm seeing out of Joel is basically he's become one with this machine. And, you know, we can all sit here and say, oh, yeah, Joel looks great. He <laughs> – I was blown away. And I've watched him ride the first day he ever swung a leg over a Yamaha. I watched him ride it. Second time he ever swung a leg over the Yamaha, I watched him ride it. And it was probably like the fourth or fifth time he ever rode it, I watched him. And watching that progression and the comfortability that he has on the machine, it, it's honestly – it's – it's pretty cool. And just the, the maturity that I see with him, you know, he's liable to have a baby by the time this thing, by this podcast airs, you know, he, he's on that threshold of when she's actually going to labor and he did, he showed up today and did his job. And like I said, I didn't ever touch a clicker with him all day, but he went out there and he wrote his motos and he just so fluent and, you know, it's the same thing, not to jump right ahead, but like Jeffrey was kind of in that same thing. I, I feel like Jeffrey's head's better than it's been in a while. Um, physically, I think he's he's better than he's been in a long time. So, and mentally, most importantly, I think Jeffrey's back. Yeah, I mean, I share so many thoughts uh, like that with Jeffrey. When he when his head is right, that's when Jeffrey is really dangerous. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, just tying up the the Joel Hattrick topic, I think he's going to be a man on a mission. I think he's going to have a point to prove. And I think one aspect of this that's going to be really interesting is for as long as we can remember, in recent memory anyway, Chad and Joel have been on the same tires and I really believe that it's going to be fun to watch watching Joel on CST tires because there are going to be times where those tires are outworking uh, Chad's tires and, and it could you know the Maxis may have very well could have some advantages at times but the fact that they're not going to be on the same tire I think that there's going to be there's going to be times where uh, there's going to be some difference in the races because of that so that's going to be uh, really fun to watch. Um, so again, it should be really exciting. I want to reference uh, Digging Deep ATV MX Fantasy here. Just a reminder that you still have time to sign up and lock your team in for Daytona. Um, you know, you can do so at atvfantasy.com today. Our other tier one rider um, is Bryce Ford. And, and we know he's got the speed. He's got the whole shot ability. He's got the equipment. He's now at a Yamaha. Um, he's got it all. And I think he's going to the gate thinking he could and should win. So jump in there, guys. What do you, what do you think about Bryce Ford? Yeah, I think Bryce has the, all the confidence in the world. I mean, he's got a solid program. He's got a lot of really good people behind him. Um, made a lot of big switches this winter that I think a lot of people may not have seen coming. You know, him switching 
to Walsh Racecraft components, you know, on a Yamaha. And, you know, obviously they have an amazing facility there in Texas. And, you know, now they've had some questionable weather in Texas over the last month. So, you know, they've made the transition to Decker training facility now too. So um, I think Bryce is putting in the work and I think Bryce is going to be um, a factor in multiple races the and but if you want to go in like all honesty um when it comes into play i there's no doubt in sheer speed that bryce ford has what it takes to run with chad and joe all the time um i haven't got to watch a bryce ride so i can't make an honest assumption of where i think he's going to stack up i don't need to watch him ride to know that his speed is going to be good enough my question is just the racecraft and maturity of Bryce Ford. And there's no doubt in my mind that he has it. Mm-hmm. I just, we won't know until Tuesday. And in reality, I don't feel like we'll know until like round three. Mm-hmm. And that's with all due respect. Like he could come out and be the most mature guy and be right there and be a thorn in those guys' side all the time. And I think he's going to. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty good. Absolutely. What about you, Gloop? Because you've got to see him ride some, uh, t- you know, touch on uh, Bryce Ford for us. Definitely. He's got the speed. He's definitely got the confidence. Uh, what do you expect from him in 2021? I think you have a podium contender every round. And, you know, he asked me the other day, he said, Gloop, what, do you, what do you think I should do to, you know, go faster? And I said, just be consistent, you know, try to smooth out the mistakes, try to smooth out the mistakes, you know, Mm-hmm. You know, one second here could be two seconds back there. So, or, you know, blowing out of this corner or that. So my thing with Bryce is if he just smooths it out, matures, just like Casey was saying, I think he'll be fine. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we saw it at the end of the year. We saw him get racy with those guys. It might've been in small spurts, but he was racy. So uh, it'll be really interesting. Um, so, okay. So I want to specifically ask any bold predictions on Bryce here. Um, you know, he's done it all. Now he's finished on the podium, got whole shots, fast qualifier. He's done all that already. Is there any chance that Bryce Ford maybe, maybe gets like a moto win this season? I, maybe I won't go as far as an overall, but could we possibly see him uh, or even, you know, mix it up? Could he, could he finish in between Joel and Chad at some point? What do you guys think? Uh, Gloop, you can, you can hop in first. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think he could mix it up with those guys. Just like I said, that just, you know, how Joel used to ride years ago, he just balls to the wall fast, fast, mm-hmm. fast, fast. But then Joel would make little mistakes and, you know, it took him a little while to figure that out, smooth it out. Like Chad already had that figured out. He already had the pro class. He's always in the pro class for so many years. Yep. And with, with Bryce, it's, it's just a matter of time with all that stuff, just smoothing it out, making smarter decisions here and there, and he'll be fine. And uh, I'm thinking heat race win at Daytona. We can do a bold prediction there. And I think he's definitely going to be mixing it up in that top pack, assuming that everyone gets out of that whole shot safe and fine. Right. Well, it's only a matter of time before he's challenging for moto and overall wins. It's only a matter of time. It's just when it happens. So uh, it'd be really interesting. What about you, Casey? Yeah, without a doubt. I think um, Bryce definitely has a very, very good chance. I'd say a 90% chance at winning a moto. Okay. Um, wow. And there's a good chance that he could end up in between – Joel and Chad at different times through the year. And and in reality, I hope he does. And I I hope Brandon Hogue does. You know, I hope – I want to say Alan Myers. It keeps rolling off my tongue, but we all kind of know that situation now. But, you know, Logan, Janusa, I hope these guys are up there and and doing it. But Mm -hmm. as of right now, with Alan out, I feel like our – our guys that are going to be Thorns and Chad and Joel's side is going to be Ristrelli, Bryce Ford, and Brandon Hogue. Mm-hmm. And that's no discredit to anyone else. I think Logan Stanfield, we've seen him top five guy. Mm-hmm. He can roll right in there. And, I, and I'm excited for that in general um, of what it is. But if you're going to ask me what I think for Bryce in that sense, I think he's got a 90% chance either way to win a moto – maybe win an overall on a weird weekend or something like that. He's going to be there. We all know it. We've seen it happen 
for the last like 10 years, the kid's been racing nationals. Like he's got, he's got it. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a bold take. Those are big percentages, but we could see it happen right away. Like you guys said, I mean, the, the whole shot at Daytona is so important that if he gets a whole shot, which he very well could, uh, it could get interesting very fast. So uh, for Daytona, your choices for digging deep ATV MX fantasy tier one are Chad Wienan, Joel Hetrick, and Bryce Ford. Um, so more than likely you're picking your predicted winner of the event right now, when you pick it for fantasy, who do you got for tier one? We'll start with you, Casey. Uh, Joel Hattrick. It's just Joel Hattrick, period. No explanation, Joel Hattrick. Okay, what about you, Gloop? I, I mean, I really I would, I don't have a choice. <laughs> it, <laughs> kinda, it just I, makes I, simple kinda, sense to me. I kind of thought yeah. that, yeah. What so we're you? just doing – see, this is where it's like, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but we're taking one guy or are we picking what I wrote down? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you get you get, uh, you get get one guy from Tier 1. Um, obviously, you know, you, you – Okay. It's very hard to pick, right? It's very hard to pick, but yeah. uh, this isn't – this isn't for all the marbles, um, but uh, just for one race. So who are you going to pick from that uh, that three-rider rider tier there? I'm going Joel Hattrick. An interesting. You know, guy. Cody. Go ahead. I found it way harder to pick my tier four guy yep. than to pick my tier one, two, and three guy. Hey, and I, 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 I was like, click, 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 and I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, right. yeah. I don't even know who that guy is. I don't know who that guy <laughs> is. I'm like, oh, man. And then I was like, well, I'm gonna just throw everyone for a loop, and I'm gonna pick everything everyone would think that I wouldn't pick. Yeah. And then I'm like, ah, I don't Can't know what do to do. I, I have the fantasy thing is so tough, you know, and I feel like that's where you're going to get your biggest difference in being able to make up and earn points is in those lower tiers, because there's going to be more variation for sure. I, I totally agree. Um, I I've been saying, I'm going to pick Chad, uh, you know, he's one, four of six. Um, you know, he's, he's been, you know, a machine at Daytona, um, hard to pick against the guy just, you know, even in, I remember, I don't even remember what year it was, whether it was 18 or 19 or whatever. I just remember thinking, you know, this is Joel's year and, and, uh, you know, Chad's going to have a hard time, um, you know, being able to get this thing done. And, and there's been a lot of years, including that one where Chad's just been the best guy down there. I don't know what it is about Daytona, um, but, but Chad's got Daytona figured out. So he's going to be my pick uh, in tier one. And as we move on to tier two riders, uh, you know, we first got to touch on, we got some breaking news over the weekend. Um, you know, Casey, you touched on it already uh, regarding a rider in this grouping just days before Daytona, Alan Myers announces that he's going to sit out the 2021 season or so it sounds. Um, you know, the timing is interesting because I know he's been down there training and, 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 you know, he's got a pro license and all that stuff. Uh, what do we know about this? Uh, man, I got one of the most disturbing con or phone calls I've ever gotten. Um, real realistically about a month ago, Alan, yeah. Alan called and, you know, kind of just said, Hey, you know, things aren't looking the best for me right now, you know, between finances and, you know, this and that, and, you know, I'm like, well, hey, let's let's band together. You know, we're a small family. You know, you need to continue these phone calls and let's call some people. And let's get some people in. You know, anything you need, Alan, like I'm in. Like I can't just hand you, you know, a pocket full of cash. Like that's just not the position I'm in. But mm -hmm. let's let's work together and get it going. And so then I feel like he, you know, we talked a couple of weeks later and he seemed pretty good. And he called me on Saturday and, you know, I was at home and I was doing some stuff and. I I figured he was calling to like complain or he needed something or you know he didn't just call me to like be my friend or say hey thanks for this or that but no Alan's a good kid he he definitely calls all the time for that but he's just like hey I wanted to call you and let you know before it became like public knowledge like I'm out and I'm like well what's up like are you hurt like I thought you kind of had your your situation figured out and he's like He's like, yeah, you know, it'd be skimming by and be close. He's like, but I just, you know, my head's just not 100% where it needs to be. And it's just all the things aren't aligning to go racing at this level. And from what I've been hearing, like, he is flying. So it's really disheartening to lose that guy that is mm -hmm. 
you know, in this top tier of guys that is a possibility of a podium threat all the time and, yep. and having a breakout year. So, uh, heartbreaking news, but it, you know, like I told him, I said, Hey, if you come back, which I believe you will for 2022, you know, we start right up where we're at. I got your back. Like I'll be there for you. It doesn't matter. And I think if you stay relevant in the sport and you respect all your sponsors that you had and you stay involved, there's a lot of other people that are going to come right back on board with you. And so, you know, man up, face the music, say, hey, this is why. And at the, in the same sentence, I told him, like, Alan, if your head's not right, why would you go out there and risk your life when you're mentally not 100% ready or whatever it is that's in your head? that's got you, whether you're stressing over finances or bikes or this or that, dude, I respect you saying this more than you going out there and end up getting hurt or not finishing where, you know, we expect you to finish or where you expect yourself to finish. Absolutely. I mean, you're hitting the nail on the head. Obviously, um, you know, I had some ideas on why this would be happening. I mean, we've seen tons of great riders come and go because that, that, you know, they haven't had the, the support that they needed. The thing for Alan, um, you know, I feel like in sports in general, so many riders, drivers, athletes in general, take that big, big step in year three. And he took such a big step last season, you know, to be up there, to get that podium at Daytona. Um, you know, if it wasn't for some mechanical stuff and whatever, some get offs and stuff like that. I mean, he was having a phenomenal season. He, sh you know, really showed some flashes last season. Uh, so I, you, you hit the nail on the head to lose that guy, to lose that guy that we were going to be watching every weekend. He was going to be in the middle of our picks and all this stuff. That's that, that saddens me to lose him. but uh, you're exactly right. If his head wasn't where it needed to be, if the stars weren't aligning for him, you know, this is probably what makes the most sense. And I sure hope that we can, we can see him come back because uh, he's, a, he's a rider with a really bright future. So um, our tier two riders to kick off the season. And remember these groupings can and will change throughout the season as the, the season shakes out as the points shake out, stuff like that. But tier two is made up of Nick Janusa, Alan Myers, if he were to be present, we know he's not going to be now. Wesley Wolf, Jeffrey Rastrelli, and Brandon Hogue. And I want to touch on Brandon Hogue first because, um, you know, he was one of the main topics last year at Daytona. He was fast in qualifying. He won his heat race over Chad Wienan, but he didn't get the great start in the main that he needed. And that cost him. I, you know, we know that, uh, you know, he feels like he could have and should have won uh, that main event if. Um, you know, he would have got the start that he got in his heat race. He's going to be a guy to watch at Daytona. I'll let you guys weigh in there. I'll go first on this one. <laughs> That's my number two pick, tier two, Hogue. Uh, not taking, you know, everyone's going to be butt hurt somehow, but taking Hogue. Uh, dude's ripping. Um, he's got very, very good backing this year. He's got the support. He's got his head in, in the right spot. Um, yeah. Brennan is going to grip, you know, I know other guys are going to be mad at me for saying this, but I got to pick one guy. It's Hogue. So uh, he has one of the best control in the air. Like he can control that quad, like, like no other, like it, it is insane how well he can control that quad. And, and here he looks smooth. He's, I mean, I say he's trimmed down a little bit. I don't know how much more trim he can get, but he's, he's flying. <laughs> You yeah, if he's trimmed down, I want to trim down with him because I need that side. But uh, <laughs> there, I mean, there's no factor. I mean, when Brandon Hogue went out, and everyone says you're only good as your last race and yada yada, but when Brandon went out of the season last year at Lake Sugar Tree, if we remember correctly, I believe he was running second. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no doubt in my mind that kid's going to be fierce. And you know, there's a lot of talk about oh, Bryce Ford's going to be the guy to replace Thomas or whatever, if we're looking for a replacement for Thomas. And we always fall into this trance of Joel, Chad, Thomas, Chad, Thomas, Joel, whatever. Yep. Um, but Brandon Hogue has the recipe to do that, without a doubt. Um, my tier two pick was a, balance, or was a juggle between Brandon Hogue and Jeffrey Castrelli. And, and to be 100% honest, I can't remember – 
I can't remember what my pick was. Um, if it was Brandon or Jeffrey. And when I do remember, I'm not going to tell anyone because one of those two guys will be pissed at me <laughs> for not picking them. So, but the, the, the positive side of it is I could pick them the next weekend. So mm-hmm. Jeffrey's had shit results for years at Daytona besides I think um, 2019, he ended up on the podium. Yep. So I think Jeffrey could be a good, a good choice for a fantasy team for Daytona because I think his head's right. But Brandon's Brandon's 2020 at Daytona was really really well. Yeah. So that's a that's a tough one, and I'm gonna hold that one under my chest. And in all honesty, I don't remember right now. I have to go look, and it's on my phone that I'm on, so I can't go look to see what I did. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. The thing about Brandon, um, and I don't know if you guys caught the last time we talked to him, he said that, you know, he was listening to, to our show or, or no, he was, he read one of the social media posts um, about, you know, him and Bryce and, and that it was going to be a battle to the, to the end that, uh, you know, Brandon was hot at the beginning of the season. Bryce was getting hot later in the season. It was going to be a battle to see who was going to be the number four guy. And uh, he said that him and Joel had gotten done training for the day and he read that post and he went out and trained again. Like that's the way that Brandon is. He's, he's gnarly. Like he's going to always take it to another level. Um, he's so headstrong. He's so motivated, hard, hard guy to pick against. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what Brandon has in store. Um, Casey started to touch on Jeffrey Australia. I want to touch on him next. He's another guy I'm eager to see at Daytona and just eager to see back, hopefully to being hundred percent in 2021 one like Joel he'll be uh you know on a Yamaha with CST tires you've both been around him uh this offseason a little bit um you know tell me about Jeffrey how he's doing uh there's no doubt that he feels like the change has been a fresh breath of air for him and like Casey said before when when Jeffrey is happy when his mind is right that's when Jeffrey Rostrelli is really dangerous you can hop in there first clue yeah um I think he needed this it's a fresh start with him um and the reason I obviously picked Hogue over Jeffrey is because of last year's results. You know, uh, I mean, again, everyone's going to get mad at me. All my friends are going to text me after this, but uh, yeah, Jeffrey, it's a, it's a new light for him. You know, he's, he's enjoying it. He likes the Yamaha. Um, he likes working, I think less on certain things. And um, yeah, I, he's, we went to uh, Selux MX, which is a track by his house. We went to his uh, personal track and, he's flying like he's absolutely flying and he you know he did a 22 minute moto there and um yeah it's it's he's he's looking good awesome what about you casey weigh in on jeffrey australia for us i think it's gonna be good for him i think um jeffrey's in a position where last year he had (laughs) let's just face it he had a terrible year whether it was on his shoulders or um, certain other circumstances that had went on. Jeffrey had a bad year. Um, we've seen Jeffrey have bad years, and we've seen Jeffrey continue to come back with promise over and over again. And um, he's probably one of the most outspoken riders about his confidence, which sometimes shows to me that maybe they're not really as confident as, as, confident as they say because they're so outspoken. Yep. But what I've seen this year so far is he's not over the top. Oh, I, I got these boys. I, I'm going to win. I, I got this. They, they ain't got, you know, nothing for me. Like, he's been a little mellower in that sense. Maybe a little humbler um, is the word for it. So, I think – no, I think Jeffrey's in a good spot. And I think um, he's humbler than he's ever been. Last year was a very humbling year. And um, he's going to be he's going to be tough, and that's where I say my pick for that spot is definitely bounced back and forth between Brandon Hogue and Jeffrey Shelley multiple times. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. I can't wait. I really, I really, he's one of the good guys. He's one of the good guys in the sport. I've always liked Jeffrey. I mean, I've been racing him my whole life, um, obviously until recent years here. So, uh, with Jeffrey, uh, can't wait to see, uh, you know, hopefully a good season, um, kind of getting back to showing what he's capable of for Jeffrey Rostrelli, uh, Nick Janusa, 
and Wesley Wolf. Both of them, they're always solid. They're both grinders, but they they both need to get some starts. You guys have been around them, uh, at least, or, or Gloop, at least you have. Um, I believe uh, you guys have been around them a little bit. Um, any info on their their preseasons and, you know, kind of what we expect from them? We haven't touched on Wesley yet. Um, Gloop, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, I was saying how Chad looks super smooth and, but you can't tell he's going fast. Complete yeah. opposite for Wesley. <laughs> Wesley is balls out. It looks like he is flying. <laughs> now I'm not a lap time guy. I didn't lap time anyone here. Okay. I know there's guys that stand on the hill here and lap time people. So I don't know where he's running on the pace with people, but Wesley's flying. Like, he, I mean, I don't know how he makes power in the air with the rev limiter. I always joke with him, but uh, he's, he, he's flying out there and uh, typical Wesley fashion, you know, does the one moto without the seat to, you know, basically force himself to stand up old school, you know, old school trick. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's really cool to see him ride. Um, typical Wesley. Uh, I mean, he, he's flying, but I guess going back towards Nick, I don't know much about Nick cause he's been in Jersey with his track and, He's been training up there and plowing the snow, plowing the snow yeah. off. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he's putting a lot of work plowing the snow off the track to ride. So I don't know where to put him in like in the, the tier here, he, or uh, sorry, the tier or like where he would rank with these guys. Yep. And I think he's coming down here soon. So uh, we'll kind of have a better, a, a better outlook on that soon. But yeah, Wesley's, you know, just like complete opposite of Chad. He's, you know, Chad's standing up and smooth and, and fluent and Wesley's looks like he is just twice as fast, but you know, it's just his style of riding. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, with Nick, I mean, I feel like you always kind of know, you know, he's going to be solid. He just needs to get some starts. Um, and in at Daytona, maybe it's a little bit, a little bit, uh, maybe not quite so demanding or maybe a little shorter race or whatever. So um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. What about you, Casey? Uh, talking about uh, Wesley Wolf and um, Nick Janusa, the other riders that uh, we haven't touched on in tier two. Uh, Wesley's going to Wesley. I mean, he's going to be a solid guy. Um, he's going to chicken wing. He's going to pull in the clutch and rev that thing out and hit the back brakes. <laughs> but he's still going to go fast. I mean, I call him chicken wing all the time. Like, Wesley, let go of the brakes. Let go of the clutch. Let off the gas a little bit. You're going to go faster. Um, but the dude's fast. You can't take it from him at all. Um, Janusa, same thing. Um, definitely not a chicken wing. Um, Janusa just needs starts. Mm -hmm. If Janusa starts in the top three – He's going to finish in the top five for sure, mm -hmm. like guaranteed. Yep. If Janusa starts in the top 10, he's going to finish in the top five 90% of the time. Yeah, He's just – so for him, he's going to have to push to that eye-opening experience coming into a corner or come out a jump the way like Joel and Chad – those guys do where your eyes just bug out. You're just like, Oh my God. Like, I can't believe I just did that to get to that next pace until that moment of getting starts and getting to the bug out experience in racing. Mm -hmm. Nick's going to be kind of where Nick does Nick. And it's not a bad thing. And I'm not, I don't mean it with any ill intent, like to be a top five pro, consistently for what six years now my hat's off to you mm -hmm. but i know nick has that burning desire that fire inside that he's sick of being known as oh i was fifth place nick like he wants to be podium nick mm -hmm. so that's where i get i hope it gets under his skin in a good way because i'd love to see him as a seasoned veteran now you know at one point i think we always felt like nick was the younger guy or the the unseasoned guy well <laughs> those days are over <laughs> like you're seasoned you're you're a veteran in this class now so put that fire to rest and get in that moment with those guys and he can i, I believe it a hundred percent we've seen him do it in pro-am step up and rise to the occasion when he needed to mm -hmm. and that's where he's at right now and it's another one of those years i i think i said it last year early in the year 
I feel like this is a make or break year, blah, blah, blah. It's what we do. Mm-hmm. But I think he's really, really in that spot right now. Yeah. I mean, you kind of know what to expect. He's always going to be in the mix. It's just, if he can take a step forward and I, I obviously starts are going to be a, a big part of that. Um, I say it every time we talk about him, he's been fourth or fifth in every championship. And just like you said, he's known as that guy. He's always consistent. I mean, that's a great place to be, but you know, he wants more. He wants to be, you know, he's got one podium. He wants more. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, what happens there. So, you know, I was going to say it's the moment of truth and all of these things, who are you going to pick? Casey already, uh, you know, said that he's basically not going to tell us it's uh, it's going to be Brandon or Gosh. Jeffrey. We don't know which one. That's I don't know how fair. That's, that's, not good. Fair. That, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, you know, Gloop, Gloop told us he's taking Brandon Hogue. I'm taking Brandon Hogue uh, just based off of what we saw last year at Daytona. I can't forget that. And you yeah. know he's coming in with some momentum. You know he's coming in hungry, uh, especially, again, because you know he knows what it's like to win at Daytona. It was a heat race, but he knows, like – you know, he's coming into Daytona thinking, Hey, this is my kind of track. This is my opportunity. This is my weekend. So I think we're going to see him, uh, you know, pushing all the buttons that he can Casey last chance. You're not going to give us an answer on this one. How is that fair? In all honesty, it's on the phone that I'm videoing with (laughs) and I can't get to it, but I am an odds. I am a gambler. So, and this is why I suck at fantasy so bad. So don't follow my picks because I will take the underdog every single time. And without having handicaps, it's a little bit easier. Uh-huh. But this tier is tough, but tier four is even tougher. And we're going to get there. And And I will make my – I will. Here's here's a, a deal. I will make my picks Facebook official, but I have to get them off my phone. I'm not, I'm not withholding information. I just cannot remember. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I, again, the, the potential go, – go ahead, Gloop. Oh, uh, as far as Janusa, have you ever seen a GoPro from Janusa? That guy has more passes than anyone in that pro class. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, if he can start out front and and hole shots are the key, mm-hmm. like there's a, he's gonna he's gonna be up there. You know, and, when you're... for him to start from last or second to last or twelfth and make his way up to fourth or fifth, it's insane. It, it really is. Uh, you know, there's no bad picks here. Uh, the only reason why I'm leaning Brandon Hogue here is what we saw last year, but all of these guys, obviously uh, that's what makes it so tough is it's so hard to pick. They're all great guys. They're all really close. Uh, that's what makes it fun. Um, so if, let's, if there was, if there was handicaps, yeah. Denusa would be my pick because even if he didn't end up fifth or fourth, mm-hmm. but he had like a three handicap, he'd still be a number one. Absolutely. So exactly. that's yep. where this game and the fantasy comes into difference with no handicap. So uh, it's not that I'm ruling Nick Janusa out from being fourth or fifth, but I think Jeffrey or Brandon could very, very easily be third. Yep. And, and I, and, or I expl- second. and I explained this to you, Casey, uh, you know, with the platform we're using for this, for this fantasy league, uh, there's not a ton of variate, like, like we're kind of locked into the way we had to design it. But if, if we um, start to see some variance or not enough variance between some of these riders, we can add another tier. So then we can, you know, we can make, if there's two riders that are always battling each other, like years ago when it was uh, Chad and Joel, and then it was, Jeffrey and Thomas, you know, and then the pack, we, those two guys could have been there, you know, the, the front two and then third and fourth could have been their own tier. If that's something that happens, that's something we can do here. So yes, no handicaps, but hopefully, you know, we can manipulate the game some, uh, you know, to make it, uh, you know, a little more difficult to pick, but still, I mean, you put those tiers together and, uh, you know, the reason why it's tough is because it's still like splitting hairs. They're still, uh, you know, really close, um, you know, really close and hard to predict. So uh, let's move on to tier three, which is headlined by, um, you know, Logan Stanfield and rookie Max Lindquist. I know, uh, you know, they're both down there riding in the area that you guys are. Um, You know, what can you guys tell me about uh, these two riders um, heading into the opener? Gloop, we'll start with you. Say that again. You said Max and Max and Stanfield, Logan Stanfield are uh, kind of headliners in, in tier three. Okay. So Stanfield, Mr. Consistent, like his lap, his laps for laps, like one after another. And the only reason I know this, like I said, I haven't been doing lap times. I was hearing his dad talk. He okay. was timing them the other day. Okay. He's around the same lap time 
every lap, and he looks good. He looks really good. He looks really smooth, and uh, he's very positive, really nice kid. He's got a good head on his shoulders this year. He's got everything behind him. I think he'll do very well. Absolutely. And then what about Max Linquist? He's been down there a little bit too, right? Yeah, so Max came down here um, twice. He's The first day he was down here, he had uh, some kind of electrical uh, electrical issue. Okay. But um, when he rode the second time and actually got the ride, it's it's the same Max that we've seen, you know. And it's really hard for me to judge him off the other guys for some reason. I don't know why, but it, it it's just he's fast, but I don't know where he's going to place with everyone else. So okay. Because he, he rides just like Chad. Yep. I mean, they're you identical. Can't, you I mean, can't <laughs> visually place him because yeah, he rides just like Chad. The whole time. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're yeah. doing everything identical, like, it, obviously. But it, it, he's going to do very well. He's going to be – he is going to be very consistent. I don't see him – I don't see him getting tired. Like, I see him – I see him working his way through the pack if he has to start in the back. I see him, st- like, staying – if he starts at a position, he'll stay there. And I think he's um, – I don't know about aggression. I, don't, I haven't really watched Max throughout the years of, of aggression level. But, um, yeah, he's going to do very good. I think he will have the opportunity to wear guys down too. And it's crazy. Uh, we'll get to you right now, Casey, but it's crazy to think, you know, a guy can be doing what Chad's doing riding like Chad, but he's like way littler. That's that's still crazy to me. Uh, Casey, <laughs> Casey, hop in there. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a good one because yeah, I mean they're completely opposite. In but they ride, the, but they ride the same stature. But they ride the same. They ride identical. Yeah, it's unreal. And it, their bikes sound the same. And I know, I know they're riding very, very similar bikes. But I'm talking about not like their bikes sound the same, but their throttle control it's, sounds the same. The way they blip the yep. throttle. Yep. It, it's really a lot alike, and um, it's a lot to be said by you know, the master teaching the puppet or whatever you want to call it. And, and we can call it like Max has become Chad's puppet in that sense. Like, and Max will tell you flat out, I study that guy because let's face it. Like as of right now, he's the greatest and the most consistent guy that we've seen in this sport. Yes. Gary Denton has more titles than him, but let's talk about now. And Chad has the consistency and, and Max has a, uncharacteristic maturity about him for his age um he's one of those guys you know he's 16 17 years old he's got a very good head on his shoulders there's not a doubt in my mind that that guy will probably not make a boatload of mistakes in his rookie year and be a very very consistent guy all the time the thing that i do think that he lacks is he didn't really have to race much last year I mean, obviously, he raced all the rounds and all that stuff. But Zach got hurt at Sunset, or right after Sunset Ridge. And so the only person that he ever actually had to bang bars with was Zach Decker, which is obviously a very fierce competitor. But after that, it was almost easy. And I'm sure Zach, or I'm sure Max will disagree with me. That wasn't easy by any means. And I don't mean to take anything away from it, but from us watching, max it looked easy he was like poetry he was fluent with the bike he just did his thing so the intensity and the aggression like gloop mentioned the aggression so i can see max coming out and let's say let's call it just for measure and no real statistics let's see let's say he comes out top five Mm -hmm. comes out in fifth place i can see max losing two positions going back to seventh but i but I bet you by the end of the moto, he's fifth or fourth because he started in that fifth plus spot because I think his aggression, these guys, Wesley Whiff comes up on Max Lindquist. Wesley's going to mow him over as hard and as fast as he can. And Janus is going to do the same thing. And, you know, these guys have been around there and it's just pro rank racing. I mean, you've been there, Cody, like, these guys are coming through like they don't care that you're on your rookie debut. Like, no, we're smashing you and we're out of here. Mm-hmm. And so those little things are going to take him some time to get that aggression up there. But I think at the end of the day, his result is still fifth or fourth or whatever. You know, if he hole shots, I see him moving a few positions back. 
and then working his way back up because that's what he's going to do because he's so consistent. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, you know, last year at the end of the season, I kind of, in my mind, I had him slated in like sixth, if he would have been able to go pro at the end of the year. And I feel like he's going to be right in that mix. He's going to be right near the top five. I don't see, you know, he's wise beyond his years, like the way he, he rides even, you know, he doesn't look like a, like a young kid. He doesn't look like he's 17, even though he is. Um, so yeah, I think that his starting point is going to be really solid. And I, and I, I feel like he's just going to get better and better. Um, I think he could find himself in that tier two mix uh, for sure. Um, and it won't take very long we'll get right back to the show but now a word from our sponsors and thank you for listening to these ads without these great companies none of this would be possible show your support for the people who support us welcome to the team two-time champ joel hetrick who dropped the biggest news of the offseason when he announced his move to cst tires the CST Takeover has been gaining momentum over the past several seasons, and now Joel Hetrick and his Phoenix Racing teammate Jeffrey Rastrelli are the most recent additions. The Pulse MXR tire has helped lead riders like Thomas Brown to race wins in three consecutive Quad Cross of Nations titles, Nick Janusa to the Pro Class podium, myself Cody Jansen as I rode my Pulse MXR fronts and white label soft comp on rears to back-to-back -back national championships in the Junior 25 Plus class, and the most recent additions have us thinking a Pro Class national championship is on the horizon for CST tires. The Pulse MXR tire, available in soft and standard compounds, offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics when compared to the competition. Visit shop.csttires.com to join the CST takeover today, or prepare to be beat by someone who did. Joel Hatrick, Jeffrey Rastrelli, Nick Janusa, myself, and so many others are believers in CST tires. Are you? CST Tires, where passion meets the ground. You already know we're Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep 8TV MX podcast. Whether it's second all-time winningest, seven-time and reigning ATV MX Pro Class National Champion Chad Wienan, or six-time and current XC1 Pro ATV GNCC National Champion Walker Fowler, it's clear the podium-proven Yamaha YFC 450R is the winning choice of sport ATVs. This unprecedented success for the YFC 450R, its unrivaled quality and performance, and the undeniable fact that Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing, has has created a Yamaha takeover within the sport quad market. Better yet, Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program is back and even stronger for 2021, meaning Yamaha riders are about to cash in on higher payouts and more prize opportunities, including a chance to win a brand new YFZ 450R. For more info, head over to YamahaBlueCrew.com, follow them on social media at Yamaha Outdoors, and check out Yamaha's full proven off-road lineup at YamahaOutdoors.com today. For over 150 years, Valvoline has led the charge by being dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, and for the better part of a decade, I've been fortunate enough to be part of the historically great Team Valvoline. From my commuting vehicles to small engines, race quads, and everything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline in all of my equipment. I've experienced increased function and durability as well as a longer life expectancy thanks to Valvoline's array of products and lubricants. Since 1866, Valvoline has been focused on bettering your experience, whether on road, on track, and everywhere in between. Upgrade to Valvoline today and check them out at Valvoline.com. SSI decals is a name synonymous with ATV racing, synonymous with big time success, and absolutely synonymous with the best looking decals around. An offshoot of their parent company that was established in 1947, SSI first took shape from owner Ian Harris's passion for ATVs. With what started as just making numbers and decals for riders like Chad Wienan, the company quickly took off, and today you couldn't imagine ATV motocross without SSI decals. The graphics maker and designer now supports all the top teams in ATV motocross, as well as teams and riders racing GNCC, Work Series, Pro Motocross and Supercross, Canadian Pro Motocross, Short Course Off-Road Trucks, UTVs, Snowcross, and oh yeah, six-time NHRA World Champion Clay Milliken. No project is too big or too small for SSI decals, making your identity stick with championship level graphics. Head over to SSIDecals.com today and then maybe call the doctor because things are about to get sick. The Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is brought to you in part by DID in their range of championship winning chains. 
Powered by technology, DID chains are designed to give you the greatest strength to weight ratio, making them the optimal chain for racing and giving you a championship level edge. DID has been driving championship winning race programs since 1933, chosen by champions such as Chad Wienan, Joel Hetrick, and myself, Cody Jansen. Champion above the rest is DID's 520 ATV 2 chain with those same design principles and materials being used throughout their entire line of products, including their on-road category as well. Pick up a DID chain today at your local dealer or reputable online e-tailer. DID, what drives you? We are proud to be partnered with Numira Technologies. Since 2001, Numira has led the charge in the ATV and side-by-side -side market, covering more applications than anyone else in the industry. Numira's advanced piston technology uses a NASA-exclusive aluminum alloy that helps to reduce expansion rates, that allows for tighter tolerances, and leads to higher overall engine performance for your machine. For more information about Numira's wide offerings of pistons, rings, gaskets, and industry-leading top-end repair kits, visit your local dealer or online at www.numira.com. Numira Technologies, pistons with an attitude. We are pleased to be partnered with Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals like rods and cylinders, all the way down to suspension parts and bearing kits, Bronco is your hard part source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world. Visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. 4Works Carbon's innovative, lightweight products include top-notch seat covers, carbon fiber, and plastic hoods, gas tank covers, exhaust shields, shock guards, and much more. Whether you have an ATV, UTV, or snowmobile, 4Works has the goodies that will improve your ride and make you salivate. We trust 4Works for increased function and a sexier look, and you should too. 4Works Carbon, always working hard to bring high-quality and innovative parts to the market. Check them out today at fwcarbon.com. The Digging Deep ATV MX podcast is also sponsored by DP Brakes, a longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology. DP has been dominating the ATV world for decades, supporting the best four-wheeled racers on the planet. 2021's impressive lineup includes Joel Hetrick and Jeffrey Rastrelli of the Phoenix Racing Team, myself, Cody Jansen, and my back-to-back -back national championships, Baldwin Motorsports, Ford Brothers Racing, Nick Janusa, Wesley Wolf, and many more, including all of the top 14 GNCC Series pros, led by the champ Walker Fowler, Bryson Neal, Cole Richardson, Jared McClure, and Chris Borich. These top riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on the top of the podium. Available at www.dp-brakes.com. Purchase at your local dealer or message the show for their contact info today. What are you waiting for? Join the best ATV riders in the world on DP Brakes. 15 years into the brand's existence, Factory 43 is back with us and continuing to make huge waves in the ATV world. For the second consecutive season, Factory 43 is the official aluminum parts choice of the Phoenix Racing ATV team providing their state-of-the-art Evo Nerf bars, MX-style front bumpers, and grab bars for some of the fastest riders on the planet. If you're in the market to upgrade your Nerf bars, bumpers, or grab bars, head over to factory43atv.com to see their full line of products available for all makes and models. Want to be just like Joel Hetrick and Jeffrey Rastrelli riding with Factory 43's industry-leading products? Head over to factory43atv.com today. Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC has been supplying riders with aftermarket components from the industry's top brands for over a decade. With over 80,000 products in stock for your ATVs, UTVs, metric and HD motorcycles, dirt bikes, and snowmobiles, Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC can tend to all your power sports needs, from hard parts to riding gear. Bike Strikes and Quads also offers hard to find used parts for your vintage dirt bike, ATV, three wheeler, or snowmobile. Use discount code ATVMX at www.btqllc.com for 10% off of orders of $100 or more. We're grateful to have Bike Strikes and Quads LLC digging deep with us. Thank you, BTQ LLC. We are proud to be partnered with Gripped Gloves. Gripped is an ATV rider owned and operated brand with a rider in mind and the goal of keeping costs affordable. The Michigan-based family operation recognizes riders' desire to showcase their identity. 
Owner David Payne's love for eccentric colorways and crazy patterns shows in his product something not often found in the work of big manufacturers. Here to push stereotypes and limitations, Grip's drive is to produce a glove with cool colors and designs that won't break the bank. With comfort and quality as key motivators, the Family Affair is constantly working on the next more innovative and improved glove. Get a grip on life, join the Gripped movement, because no one wants a bland glove. Check them out today at grippedgloves.com, that's G-R-I-P-T gloves.com, and use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout. Just like the sport of ATV motocross as a whole, our Digging Deep community is brought together by the love for racing that we all share. Our sport is compiled of many great people and leaving that charge is the Launderville family at Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. This racing owned family business is a steel and concrete supplier serving the entire United States. Launderville Steel is a full service steel supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum and stainless steel products headlined by the 4130 chromoly tubing and plate used in the building of chassis for ATVs and UTVs, off-road truck racing, late model dirt and pro tractor pulling series, drag racing, and more. Launderville Steel loves their racing just as much as we do, but don't forget about their concrete division as well. With over 25 years of experience, the concrete division can supply everything you need to complete your next business or personal project. Their central Midwest location enables LSE to easily serve customers across the United States. For a quote, additional info, answers to more of your questions, or to talk a little racing, head over to LaundervilleSteel.com or give them a call today. We are proud to be partnered with yet another racer-owned company. Thank you, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. Thanks for listening, and remember to support our partners. Now back to the show. He's kind of in the same, the same position there, you know, Logan's lap times, and he's won multiple amateur championships by being so consistent. Mm-hmm. for for so many races throughout the year and i think he's another one and, and that was the the next year that i really struggled balancing between him and max and i, I think i end up picking max um because i'm a gambler in that sense like i i'm gonna bet on max even though like obviously business wise and relationship wise um I want Logan to do better than Max and I, and I'll die to my grave with that. Like I want Logan, no, again, no intent against Max, but Logan's one of my guys, but I'm a, I'm a gambler. So when points are paid, I'm going to go after the guy that no one expects anything from. And let's face it. I expect more from Logan than I do for Max. This is his second year. He's been down here training. He's got the entire program. He's got the consistency. Consistency. He's got the maturity. He's got the the whole program around him, and so does Max. But we've never seen Max race on the pro gate. We've seen Logan finish in the top five. We know he can be there. So, um, I think Max was my pick for that tier. But um, obviously, I'll be very happy if Logan Logan proves me wrong in in fantasy world. And and let's let's get to it. I mean, I've seen it a hundred thousand different times on, on other fantasy leagues that play for dirt bike stuff like dude i get mad at the riders and i i hear about it in different podcasts and stuff and it's going to be the same way and and my passion and and my feelings for this is going to be 10 times worse like because now i can just walk over to someone's truck and be like what the hell like uh-huh. you ruined my entire fantasy team so um i hope logan ruins my fantasy team if that makes any kind of sense. You know, I really hope that it makes us, uh, you know, more interested with what's going on throughout the entire class. I feel like, uh, you know, that uh, so early on with digging deep, my motivation was to give some of the guys the coverage that maybe weren't getting it everywhere, right? Like, obviously we were watching the guys at the front of the class. Um, You know, I wanted to give, you know, some coverage to the guys that necessarily weren't those guys. Maybe the guys like I once was, you know, um, in, in the top 10, but not, you know, doing anything crazy 
Uh, I feel like now we're going to be watching all of these guys for obvious reasons. They're on our, they're on our fantasy teams and whatnot. Um, the rest of the riders in tier three are Troy Hill uh, and Cody Ford. Um, there are some other names in there. West Lewis, if, and when he was, you know, going to race the season, Parker would be in there. Parker will work. Uh, if he were to return now, uh, we heard some rumors about that. Um, anything stand out about those other guys? I mean, I feel like when we're talking about, you know, you know, Troy Hill, if he was to take a step forward, he could be in the mix. He had some top tens last season. Uh, Cody Ford, I kind of touched on earlier that, um, you know, that year three is when riders take, you know, can take jumps forward. And obviously Cody had a good rookie year. He wasn't happy with what happened last year, but he had, you know, um, some hurdles he had to overcome and injuries and stuff like that. Um, so he's going to be a rider that wants to take a step forward. That's all of our top three, uh, you know, our tier three riders, I should say. Um, anything that you guys want to touch on between Troy Hill or, uh, or Cody Ford before we take our picks? I haven't seen or heard much out of either one of the camps. I think uh, Bryce has kind of taken, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the heat for the Ford camp this year. Um, you know, on just being, I mean, that's, he's a, he's a standout performer. Um, Cody, I, I've never doubted Cody. I've been in Cody's corner for many, many years. And I've always, whether I was working with them or, or I wasn't or whatever, I've always made it a point that like, I just walk over and around with no one's around and, you know, kind of just wrap my rant, my arm around Cody's shoulder and, and just have that, like talk to him because I think Cody has a lot and, and he can do a lot. So there's no doubt. And Troy's another one that's kind of the same situation. I have a lot of belief in Troy, but I haven't heard nothing out of that camp. And I haven't heard a whole bunch about Cody. So I'm kind of in the dark there. Um, I'm not that much of a gambling man when it comes to playing fantasy. I am a gambler and I will gamble, but I will gamble with the almost guarantees. <laughs> so uh, I'm a little iffy on where I would go with either one of those guys. Uh, yep. Yeah. I think that uh, they could tech definitely take some steps forward. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know that we pick them over the other guys. What about you Gloop? Do you have anything to weigh in on there? Yeah. I haven't heard anything of from Troy Hill about, you know, like Casey said from his camp, I don't know um, what their plan is at all. Um, Cody's here at Decker Decker training facility. Um, he's riding very well as always um, something that, you know, he can always say he's got a pro podium, you know, <laughs> regardless, whatever, you know, I said it to him the other day. It's like, if you quit tomorrow, you still have a pro podium. So Absolutely. I mean, he, he looks like, you know, it looks like Cody Ford riding out here. He looks good on the Yamaha. Doesn't look like anything changed. Um, he's, he's never really like reckless or sketchy. He's pretty smooth rider as well. And uh, he looks pretty good out here. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. How many good riders never get a pro podium, right. Or great riders. Uh, so, yeah. so Cody definitely has that in his back pocket. And I know that inside that camp, I mean, we had Nick Hickey on uh, a couple episodes ago and I mean, he thinks that, uh, you know, he should definitely uh, see um, Cody Ford in, in that tier two mix. So I'm excited to see what happens there. Um, you know, we, we got Casey, he says he's taking max Gloop, Did you tell us who you're taking in this tier yet? Uh, I wrote both their names down. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm taking Logan. I'm taking Logan. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You know, these are both of these guys are kids that I'm, I'm really, really big fans of. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, they both have really good heads on their shoulders. Uh, I've always been a big fan of Logan. Like, like Casey said, we've seen him top five before. Um, you know, I feel like, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting, um, to see what happens with Cody. Um, you know, Logan too, uh, again, Logan, Logan, those two have good heads on their shoulders, but I think the upside of Max has has suckered me in uh, to taking Max. I feel like we could see some some really impressive uh, things out of him, and maybe um, right away. So uh, we'll see what happens there with those tier three riders. But that's going to be another really interesting tier. One more uh, comment out of me. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Go ahead. Max, Max, Max has a a good. He has a big future ahead of him. Like. That kid, I always forget how young he is. Like, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm talking to someone my age. Like he, exactly. I don't think he just says a curse word. Like he, he's professional. Like that kid, you know, he's he's just starting. I think he's gonna do very very well in his pro 
his pro career. Absolutely. His, his career is so bright. And uh, I feel like, or his future, I should say his future is bright on and off the racetrack with uh, you know, the kind of kid that he is, it's going to be uh, really fun to watch. Casey, you got any, any finishing up words there on tier three? Uh, it's such a tight spot for me. <laughs> I, I'm playing fan in, in this review podcast. We're, we're going off. A, I'm playing fantasy in this deal. So okay. um, I'm good with my pick. People are going to be mad all they want. Um, this is about winning, winning prizes and uh, just having a good time with it. And, you know, I can tell you who my round two picks are going to be right now already. <laughs> but if the tiers change, I can't. So uh-huh. um, I'm, I'm still struggling with my tier four, but I think I have a solid pick of <laughs> who my, my tier four is going to okay. be. Okay. How are you picking round two if you didn't give us a, two, a tier two pick? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I, don't, I don't know who we, it is we, we gotta turn the phone off i guess okay <laughs> okay so let's uh casey's kind of leading us there let's go to your four it's our final grouping of uh of what remains here um and the following guys hold a pro class license for 2021 um i, I guess guys just jump in here when you want to comment on any of these guys this is our tier four lineup michael allred rookie number eight caesar jimenez Rookie number 101, Vince Merman, rookie number 535, Patrick Torini, rookie number 551. Gloop, he's down where you're at right now. How is how is he looking? Uh great. Um, he's only um what from what I'm understanding is he's only racing Daytona. He has to go back. Um, it's either the European Championship or the French Championship, but he committed okay. to one of those at you know where he's from he's from italy um doesn't speak very much english he's got his uh his uh mechanic with him sergio who's very good at english and he's helped us out in our efforts in uh in italy denmark and uh germany and he's always a good time but yeah he's a very good kid he he's uh their jumps over there aren't as big or or as here so it takes them a little bit longer to get used to stuff but then as soon as he gets used to it he's hitting every jump out there but he's I don't know. I don't really know what we can see or, you know, what I can predict from him at Daytona. I don't know if the, like the aggression is going to be there. Okay. Um, there's not like over in Europe, the aggression isn't always the same as over here at times, but then at, at times it is. So it kind of all depends what, what country that rider is coming out of. No, I, I get it. Um, it's just hard to see that, that AMA ATV pro class speed. If you don't see it, all the time, like our riders do. Um, and they race on different stuff over there, like you said. So that's, that's, um, it'd be interesting to see. And I wanted to touch on him before we went by, because I knew that he was kind of in your area. And there's another, there's another foreigner. Um, I'm going to botch this with Matt connect. I don't know. I, I, again, again, I don't know. Do you know how to say it? Why tech? I think it's why tech. Okay. I don't know how to say his last name at all, but I think it's why tech. Okay. Or E-tech, but Y Tech is what I've been hearing. Uh, Poland, uh, Polish rider. Yep. Um, he might be coming up here at some point to train, which would be awesome. It'd be uh, cool to spend time with him. He, uh, uh, from what I'm hearing, he came over here with a gear bag, and he he's he came over here and he's doing the you know living the dream basically. He bought some bikes and uh, he's you know full out and he he's uh gonna race the whole pro series so that's gonna be actually really really cool because you don't ever see that you see guys coming for one round two rounds but this guy you know for a whole year that's awesome yeah that's that's uh really cool what do we know what kind of bikes he's riding uh yamaha's what do you got casey is he the one on the weaning bike uh torini's on a weaning bike and i don't know if uh ytech's on a weaning bike as well Okay. But when okay. I I've when I see him, post or someone posted the bike. Yeah, uh, that, if you're I seeing. I posted Tarini. a picture of Torini, yes. Yeah. But okay. yeah, uh, Whitech, I'm pretty sure he's a big tire rider. So like over there, I'm not 100 percent on this, but you know the way that races get because of the sidecars, you have to run a tall, skinny mm-hmm. sand tire. And um, I'm not 100 percent like. I don't know if I'm 100% right on this, but I think he's a big tire rider, so it might be a little bit different for him here. But what I'm hearing is when he's on the ground, he's fast. Like, okay. he is fast. And that, and like I said, jumping is a little bit different over here. So, um, you know, usually their jumps 
they start looking, they start out like our jumps, but with the way the ruts get, you can't, you can't jump the jump by the end of the race or the end of the day. So uh, that's where some of these guys or those two guys will, you know, we'll kind of see, I mean, mm-hmm. Daytona is tame, so they shouldn't have a problem with anything there, obviously, but the, well, the bigger stuff might, might come into a factor. Y- yeah. And, and we talked about, it. I mean, get through Daytona and then you kind of have a break. So, I mean, they'll, they'll be able to acclimate themselves more and more to uh, maybe our, our uh, riding styles and tracks and jumps and stuff like that. So uh, let's finish out this list. Uh, Zachary Harris, rookie number 22, Ty Hudson, he's a second year pro. Um, we know we've we've seen him. Uh, Michael Perkins, rookie number ninety four. McCain Richards, rookie number thirty one. Marshall Smith, rookie number seven twenty four. And Jacob Stevens holds a pro license, rookie number 21. Um, again, you know, we don't know for sure that we're not going to see all those guys at the first race. We're not going to see all those guys all the races. Um, but those are license holding pros. So you got to assume we're going to see them all at some point. Um, if you guys don't have anything else to add there, uh, let's take our picks. And, and the way that Casey has led into this, I'm pretty, pretty interested to see who he's going with here. He says that this was his hardest one to pick. Uh, Casey, who's your tier <laughs> four pick for Daytona? You better not take my pick, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> he's Casey, uh, Casey, Casey's taking, go. Casey's taking three riders and he doesn't <laughs> yeah. know which. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on yeah, his phone. It's all on his phone. Uh, all five of them. Uh, no, I'm gonna go with Michael Allred. Yeah. Um. He his starts were excellent in pro am. Um. He's a workhorse. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't even know him. I mean, I I think I talked to him for the first time this year up at Morgan's Corner, and super cool guy. Um. But I just think. Uh, I don't know. That that was the one that stood out in the tier four for me. Um, he's a working class guy. Um, you know, Chris Hunt and Huntscapes, they, they got his back. And um, I've been friends with them for a long time. But just watching the guy that gets good starts when the odds are kind of stacked against him and different things, like, that's my guy. All right, Gloop. Who you got? All right, well, he didn't. He didn't take my guy, but okay. I kind of overlooked my call right and I shouldn't have. Um, yeah, Mike is an amazing person. He's a very good dude, a very consistent rider. Um, I don't think I've, I don't know, have he, I don't think I've ever seen him even crash. But uh, my pick is Vince Merman right now. Vince looks fast. He looks very fast. But can Vince run? the pro pace and the pro length of the motos. I don't know. But when I look through this, that that's my pick and I'll, I'm sticking with Vince. Okay. And he, he won pro-am at South of the border at the end of the season, right? Uh, I'm I positive. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm positive. He yeah, did. he did. And, yeah. uh, that's and, what... and Vince was, was really close on my pick there. Um, I just, I, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of nerves on Vince's side. I mean, dude, if there's a huge pack of rollers at Daytona, I made the wrong pick because Vince is going to go through them at like mock million mile an hour. Like he did at pleasure Valley. Like the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. And like brings chills to me. Just thinking about it. I've never seen someone go through those rollers that fast. And I would have put, if you would have said who can go through those rollers faster, Chad or Vince Merriman. I would have bet a thousand dollars on Vince Merriman. <laughs> no one went through those rollers that fast the entire weekend. He's got it. But um, I went with uh, Michael, and it, it's going to be good. I'm I'm glad we all got different picks here. Well, I'm not going different picks because I'm going Michael Allred. Uh, when I look at that group, <laughs> when I look when I when I look at that group, he's the guy that stands out. If for no other reason than he's it's hard to think of him as a rookie. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I was racing him in 25 plus a few years ago, but uh, just he's, he's going to be wise, you know, kind of 
beyond his years when you compare him to maybe them other uh, younger kids. And he's so consistent. Like Gloop said, I can't remember ever seeing him crash or anything like that. I mean, uh, you know, he's going to be there every week, every weekend. So um, I would go Mike there for our tier two picks. Uh, I'm sorry, tier four picks. And uh, yeah, that'll be really interesting to see. I, you know, I hope that people don't look at this. Like we're just talking about fantasy. I just think that covering this in a fantasy sense uh, makes it, you know, very interesting to like, you know, feature different riders. Like each one of these tiers is kind of a race in itself, which is the way that I, you know, wanted to break it down. I mean, with tier four, like it doesn't matter if those guys are, are a half a lap down or whatever, they're all going to be racing each other. Like you're going to want to be the highest finisher in that tier. And if you do that, that means you're going to finish well on the day. So uh, I feel like that's a cool way, um, you know, kind of to break that down. So uh, Gloop's team is Joel Hetrick, Brandon Hogue, Logan Stanfield, Vince Merman. Solid team. How do you feel about it, Gloop? How's that, how's that team feeling to you when you hear it like that? Four riders, that's going to be your team for uh, Daytona. Uh, I feel, I'm feeling good about it. Like, you know, <laughs> obviously, again, a lot of people are going to be butt hurt, but there's a lot of good r- other riders out there. But right. that, you know, that's my choices and that's what it is. So, hey, hey. It. Hey, if if anybody's too pissed, all they got to do is go out there, show out, and then you're going to pick them the next week. So that's, 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 uh, that's your excuse there. So Casey is going with now, wait for it. Joel Hetrick, Jeffrey Rastrelli, (laughs) or Brandon Hogue. We don't know. When's the, when's the cutoff for picks now? When's the last (laughs) moment we can actually make our final pick? So my hope is I don't know exactly how Daytona is time-wise, but typically you have a two-hour break after qualifying to the first moto. And I'm hoping that in that right in the middle, so an hour after time qualifying and an hour before the first moto, that's when it's going to get cut off. And I'll announce that time exactly as we get closer, but we're going to be, you're going to be able to like revise your picks after qualifying if you choose to do so. So right about when my head's ready to explode is when I can go on, log exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, as, if, as if you didn't uh, have enough stuff going on, Casey. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I believe I picked Rastrelli. And like I said, and I, I will hold to it. Okay. I'm going to post them. As soon as we get off, I'm going to screenshot it and I'm going to post it. I'll tag both of you okay. and Digging Deep and Fantasy. But you, you made a comment about – the, this podcast or our reviews or our predictions aren't just about fantasy. No, you're wrong. <laughs> Everything from here on out is about fantasy. You don't understand how serious this shit is. I this, know it this does. is this is it. We're so, it's over. So I know it's it does, over. Casey, but there's people that are like, well, you know, I don't want to hear just about fantasy right? Well, I don't feel like we're not just talking about a fantasy game. Like we're talking about all the riders. We're talking about what to expect. So I just wanted to touch on it in that way. But, you know, so Casey now he has a four man team instead of a five man team. We got Joel Hetrick, Jeffrey Rastrelli, (laughs) Max Lindquist, and Michael Allred. Um, Solid team. Very. I I can pick a fifth guy. (laughs) No. no, Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in the future. Yeah. Not not right now. Do we have any drops? No drops, no drops. You need to be consistent every weekend, just like the riders that you pick. But uh, yeah, solid team there. So uh, very Phoenix heavy at the top. Um, wonder why. But uh, so for my, t- <laughs> <laughs> but for my team, so I got Chad Wienan, like I said, Brandon Hogue, Max Linquist, and Michael Allred. I think it's solid. I think it's probably pretty safe too. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting to watch this all play out. It's going to be, I, again, I feel like it's going to give us some more, uh, some more cheering interest. I feel like digging deep ATV MX fantasy is going to make, uh, you know, the 2021 season that much more enjoyable for us. Uh, or Casey says it's going to drive us crazy, uh, which it probably will, but at least it'll give us some more cheering interest. And, uh, yeah, 
if you haven't done so yet, sign up today at atbfantasy.com, lock in your picks for Daytona and play against us. You can stack your teams against ours. Um, it's truly going to be fun to see, um, you know, who knows uh, the sport the best. So I'm super excited for that. And uh, thanks to everybody who signed up already. I really didn't know what to expect before we started this. And the, the reception to it has been amazing. I mean, I can't believe how many people we've already had sign up. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I want to kind of move away from, you know, even referencing the fantasy stuff so much. Um, you know, the odds are that your, your winner for Daytona comes from tier one. We talked about that, Chad Ween and Joel Hattrick and Bryce Ford. I want to ask you guys, do you think that that will be our podium uh, looking at Daytona specifically? Will those three guys finish out the podium or could a, a rider like Brandon Hogue, Jeffrey Rastrelli or Nick Janusa get up there and throw us off? Obviously we've discussed that that could happen. Uh, you know, should we expect that to happen? We know crazy things happen at Daytona almost every year. Um, should we expect that those th top three, you know, those tier one riders of Hetrick, Weenan, and Ford, is that going to be our podium or should we expect something crazy to happen and have one of them not be up there for this, for the season opener? I think something crazy can happen. And if, how about we pick six riders? <laughs> for for the for for just for this now for what we think could what could be the wild cards and obviously we know who's consistent we know who's gonna be on the podium yep but we also don't know what could happen because it's Daytona six so riders I'm so adding, we don't know what that third so spot's gonna, gonna be that but like anything can happen like you know Joel crashed last year um, Weenan's had bad luck in heat race uh, what two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I want to add, if we can, just to this this conversation right now. Okay. Um, Rastrelli, Hogue, and Janusa. So okay. I think that those are the six that it could be in any order that I cannot predict, basically. Okay, I'm Captain saying. Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's still other guys. Like, you if, guys if, just ripped Alan... me upside down in the other. <laughs> like, between Rastrelli or Hogue. Well, if Alan, if Alan was there, if Alan was there, he would have been. I'm betting been all on Alan. I'm betting all I, on Alan. I, I would love to have a lot of money and give it all to Alan, honestly. I would really love to give that kid some money. Yeah, well, I, I agreed. I think uh, think that, uh, you know, those are the top six guys with Alan being out. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I, I was curious to see if you guys thought that Hogue, Rastrelli, or Janusa was going to get up there and maybe be on the podium. The odds are probably pretty good that one of those guys is on the podium because something always seems to happen at Daytona, and I don't think that we can just pencil those tier one guys in. Um, okay, I want to move on to this next question here because we're kind of getting off the rails uh Bryce Ford he finished fourth last year at Daytona impressive ride for his rookie debut um no doubt that Max Lindquist is the headliner of this year's rookie class do you guys have any bold predictions on where he'll finish at Daytona or um maybe even a better question I want to ask you guys what is Max Lindquist's best finish this season I want to know what you guys think his, his best finish could possibly be um, as we look to 2021, his rookie campaign. Is he showing us something? What are you showing us, Casey? <laughs> his team. His picks. Now we know. I'm showing you my pick. It's Brandon Hogue. I told you I couldn't remember. There we go. It was Brandon Hogue. Oh, it was, man. It was, the opposite. Now. it was the opposite of what he told us. It was the opposite. That, that, means, that, means, I, that, that means we all took Brandon Hogue. Man, um, I'm gonna pick Jeffrey just because I want to be different. Well, betting, betting man. Yeah. So you I said uh, best finish Jeffrey. for Max? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Uh, give me your your predicted best finish this season for Max Linquist. What's his ceiling? Fourth place. Yeah, I I, I think he gets in the top five for sure. I was thinking yeah. fourth or fifth. What about you, Casey? I think no problem. Mm -hmm. I gar I would almost guarantee a third. Oh my! But I think it's gonna come. I think it's gonna come from like a, like a four four, or okay, like yeah, a five three, for an okay. oddball third place. Okay. Um. I don't think we've seen a rookie that's gonna come into this class 
with the consistency that Max Lindquist is going to bring. Mm-hmm. And I, I've been very bold. And I, and at times I've been caught saying, I think everyone's over predicting the guy mm-hmm. at the same time I'm over predicting. Him. <laughs> so I can be as contradicting as I want to, because this is my opinion and my opinion only, but this is what it's going to be. You're going to see Max Lindquist on the podium. And if I was to take a second bet, it's going to be red bud. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's where those Max the- Lindquist will be on the podium. Mm-hmm. at red bud those are the kind of tracks that i think that you're gonna see him really shine on um i agree i think that i think that uh you know he's gonna i don't i i wasn't gonna predict a podium um but uh you know he's he's going to make some you know some impressive rides i guarantee it so uh when you stack his rookie season you expect out of him up to bryce's last season do we think that you know it is is um max gonna have those kind of flashes or is it not gonna be you know quite to the level of bryce um, and he is a little younger. So, I mean, he, he probably has a little more uh, maturing to do, but you're almost expecting a Bryce Ford like rookie season out of Max. That's what you're saying. Casey. I think the consistency will be better. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, I, and do I think we're going to see like this crazy flash of brilliance like we've seen at Three Palms from Bryce? No, I, I don't think we're going to see him go and pass Chad back and pass Joel back like right. Bryce did. I mean, that was impressive, and I don't care. We can we can stroke Bryce's ego all day long, mm-hmm. but that was <laughs> remarkable. Yeah. But I think we're going to see um, now that Bryce's rookie year is in pass and we can discuss it, mm-hmm. we're going to see a more consistent rookie year out of Max Lindquist because Bryce had a lot of downs, but his ups were at the very, very, very high mm-hmm. tier of ups. Do we see Max lead a couple laps with a whole shot? Absolutely. Cause I don't see Joel or Chad or Brandon or Bryce just plowing into Max when they're trying to get to the front. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to realize like, okay, like I'm a little bit faster here. I'm a little bit faster there. I'll pass them clean here or whatever it is. So I think we could see Max lead laps. And if Max leads laps, I think it ends up in a podium weekend. Agreed. I think that you're, you're pretty much exactly, again, I wasn't going to go as far as a podium, but I, I you're exactly describing uh, what I expect out of Max. That's for sure. Um, okay. What's your first rider? What's your prediction for first rider that we're going to see get a podium this season? Nick Janusa, which would be his second career podium. Wesley Wolf, who's never podiumed before. Brandon Hogue, which would be his third career podium. Or Jeffrey Rastrelli, which would be his 20th career podium. But it's been a little while, so I feel like this is a, this is a fair question here. Who grabs a podium first in 2021? Um, Gloop, let's go to you first. Um, without explanation, taking Jeffrey. Okay. I think Jeffrey knows what needs to be done to get on that podium. And so many people before. Yeah. Yeah. So, so many people would love to see that. That's for sure. What about you, Casey? First, uh, first podium between those guys, who's going to get on the podium first this season? You're giving me more gray hair and less hair as we talk. (laughs) Uh, How do I not put my foot in my mouth? If you don't want to. I want to say Brandon Hogue. Um, I I don't even agree with my own comment. (laughs) Uh, I I don't even agree with my own comment, but he's my tier two guy. I just showed you the proof. So uh, I've got to think of your slaves. Yeah, I think Jeffrey's gonna gonna podium at Daytona, but I also think Brandon Hogue's gonna podium at Daytona. So you're gonna grill me through this entire show about this, but I'm in a very tight. <laughs> I get it. No, I, not I get even it. not even politics. I don't care about that. I don't. I don't mentally and in my heart, I'm in a very right. tight spot between right. those two riders because I have so much respect for them, mm-hmm. and I and I it could go either way. Brandon could be sixth and Jeffrey could be third or second or first Mm -hmm. or vice versa. 
They could go from six to first without a doubt. Which either is, one of those guys could lead laps and win races. Yeah, which is which is again why that tier is so tough to predict and why it's going to be so fun to watch. And, and I think all three of us, I speak for all three of us, uh, both of those guys are two guys that uh, I'm I, we're always cheering for. They're both killer guys and the guys that we want to see succeed um kind of piggybacking off of that question i want to know who you think is the the most likely candidate to fill the void left behind by thomas brown being a consistent like a a podium threat every weekend kind of the same question but we're not talking flash in the pan i'm talking guy that's going to do this all (laughs) casey's showing us his gray (laughs) hair he's growing as we're as we're (laughs) As we're recording here, um, I'm just, you know, I'm wondering, and okay, if you don't want to pick a specific guy, I think that we're going to see those guys push a little bit harder than maybe we were in past seasons, because we knew last year we could pencil Thomas into third. You know, we knew that was our podium. Some combination of Joel, Chad, and Thomas were going to be our podium guys. This year, like the class knows, those guys know that, hey, Chad and Joel are still there, but Thomas is gone somebody's going to be on, on the, on the, the podium other, you know, along with those guys. And I'm just wondering if we're going to see somebody take a step forward and kind of claim that spot as their own. Pineapple. I'm going to go with a complete (laughs) bullshit answer. (laughs) Uh, So so since I said Brandon was going to be the first guy to podium, I'm going to go with Jeffrey's going to be the, Jeffrey's gonna fill the void. See, and I don't. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a hundred percent bullshit and uh, politically correct. Yeah, but I don't know that that's bullshit. Because... I don't doubt it at all. Like I said, they could either do it. That's so. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it, Casey, because he's been around the block. He's been there for so long. Again, he's had, you know, his next podium will be his 20th. He's done it for the longest time. He's done it way longer than these guys. A very, I, you know, if he gets back to Jeffrey Rostrelli form, we could easily see him as a, as the, you know, guy that those other guys got to go through to get a podium every weekend. Do you have any other comments to add there, Gloop? Um, I would, so it was Jeffrey Hogue, and what was the third? So, so you know, who's going to be the guy that could step up as, you know, that that staple, that consistent okay. guy? I mean, Wesley Wolf is in that mix with those guys and yeah. the points and stuff. Yeah. And but also, Janusa, you know, obviously, yeah. always Nick Janusa, he's in that mix. If he takes a step forward, uh, you know, if look at all the years of points of him finishing, you know, fourth or fifth, take Thomas out of there, he's third or fourth. Maybe yeah, the, that true. year where he's where he's the third guy. All right, then I'm take I'm taking off of consistency, and I'm taking off of most passes. I'm taking Nick Janusa. Yeah, see, I like it. We got some variety. Um, <laughs> it's going to be so fun to watch. I mean, I, I feel like that tier is going to be the most interesting one to watch. I truly believe that. Um, okay, so and I want to I want to say though, Cody, like I don't want to say it's bullshit, but like it's contradicting myself. No, I knew. I'm saying Brandon's going to be the first one to a podium. Yep. I but yeah, you yeah. may know, Glute may know, but. Sometimes I get myself in trouble when I do these things because <laughs> I say stupid shit that, that yeah. sends it out there. But <laughs> but I'm going with Jeffrey because of his consistency that he can pull over the year. But I'm contradicting a lot of the things I say. But it, it's a toss-up, and that's the beauty of uh-huh. what we're experiencing yeah. this year. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming to have this kind of, uh, you know, variance and this kind of unpredictability in the class. Um, we're getting close to the end here. I want to ask you guys, um, you know, last year we gave out a digging deep, most improved pro award. Hopefully, uh, we're not gonna, you know, hopefully I'm not making you grow any more, you know, gray hairs or anything like that on this question. Last year it came down to Alan Myers and Wes Lewis, uh, Wes ended up winning it and deservedly. So he improved from 13th in points and 2019 to eighth in points in 2020. Um, I want to get your prediction on a returning pro who will make the most improvement from 2020 to 2021. Casey, I'll get your answer first on this one. Who's going to be your most improved pro this upcoming season? Hands down, Logan Stanfield. Ooh, good pick. Without, without a doubt. Good pick because he's and he's so consistent. Um, yeah, good pick. And if he, you know, you got it's hard to it's hard to almost uh, remember that he was a rookie last season because he was so solid. You know, 
You don't even think of him as a rookie. I, I got right? brown hair back from that. <laughs> yeah, I got brown hair back from that question. All right, all right, good. An easy one for him. What, what about you, Gloop? Who are, uh, who are you thinking for most improved pro? I mean, that's that's a solid choice right there. Um, if we're basing if we're basing it off of what they what they finish in 2020, right? Is that what we're technically basing it that, off? That's of? that's what wise? I based that's what I based it off of last year. Now there is some. I would have to kind of look and make a better educated choice so, here because so, what, what did Brandon get overall? Exactly. I mean, he was outside the top ten yeah. in points, oh. and 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 that's not <laughs> because, what I would base it on because he was he, oh, okay. was, top, he was top five <laughs> in points when he got hurt. So that wouldn't be fair to some of those other guys that may take a step forward. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I think I'm going to take Cody Ford. He was my preseason pick last year. Uh, I think that you know him just being back healthy. Getting back to healthy, I feel like Cody Ford is going to, uh, you know, take a step forward this season. He was 13th in points last year, and I think he's going to be better than that uh, this upcoming season. He's going to take that third-year jump like I talked about. Um, you know, do you guys ha- have any comments there? Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll move on to one of our last questions here before we get out of here. Uh, I mean, if we're basing it off of the points last year, I don't know because I don't look at the points, but I think Logan – like. Like Casey said, Logan is a very, it is very good, a very good pick. Um, if I can pick two, like somebody did, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take, I'll take Hogue for it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, based on the points, it's probably the safest pick that there is. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, who, who now? Casey is going to say that, uh, he, he's, he's contractually obligated and gloop. I'm sure, you know, you don't want to make any enemies here, but I got to ask you, uh, I want uh, your pick for who's going to win this title. Does Chad Wienan win his eighth? Does the Yamaha CST combo catapult Joel Hattrick into third play into his third title, or does someone else come out of left field and blow all of our minds? Who's your title pick Casey? <laughs> it's pretty simple for me, um, and and I'm taking and I'm, I'll take all that stuff out of it. Okay, um, I'm gonna go with Joel, obviously, for for sponsorship reasons, yes. But when I and and I swear, like I try to do podcasts and do interviews from the heart, not from my affiliation job side yeah. of things but I, I i truly feel joel is gonna be a, to a new level this year um but <laughs> it's the same thing i mean chad could absolutely just show up like we know he's gonna and be right there and i think we're gonna see the one of the tightest points battles that we've seen obviously we've seen the this year kind of loosened up right at the end but uh, the year before and the year before, we've seen very, very tight battles or points battles, and I think it's going to stay the same this year. Um, we're not going to have a champion until the last checkered flag flies. Mm-hmm. All right, Gloop, can you weigh in on this one? Uh, what I would love to have is a complete mix-up. Okay. What I know, which, based off of everyone's consistency, I'm picking Joel. You know, it's been really interesting to listen to you guys too, because you guys have been around Joel and you've, you know, watched what he's doing, watched how he's looked, watched the transition to this new machine. Um, because you guys are taking Joel, I'm going to take Chad. And obviously it's a, you know, it's a pretty, if you were putting money on him, it's a pretty safe pick after all the titles that he's won. But I was you know, before this conversation, I was really curious to see the way that you guys were going to talk about Joel and him being on a new bike and him being on new tires and having all this change inside his program. And uh, it's pretty telling to me with the way that you guys are talking about him. So um, probably more interested and more excited to see Joel Hetrick than ever before with all this change. I can't wait to see uh, what happens there. Okay. So the other guy, Chad Weenan, he's 36 years old, two questions. Does Chad catch or surpass Gary Denton before he walks away? His eight, eight titles, Chad's at seven right now. And how much longer do we think Chad's actually going to race professionally? Now we know he's only going to race as long as he's competitive. I just wonder if you guys have a gut feeling on how long that that could be. 
I think he's got two years. But if he say he wins the championship in twenty twenty one, and he come he returns for twenty twenty two, there's a chance that he would do twenty twenty three. Say he doesn't win in twenty twenty one, I think he comes back in twenty twenty two to try to win. So I'm never gonna. I, I'm just not a straight answer type of guy. I guess <laughs> I, I'm an optimistic guy. Like I'm gonna look at it from. Why would I come back? If I was in Chad's shoes, he has nothing more to prove. Mm -hmm. Chad could walk away today and retire from ATV racing as one of the greatest of all time and a complete legend and class act professional. But I think the fire that he has will continue as long as he's winning races. Okay, so... It's a stereotypical answer, but it's, it's the truth. Okay, so if you had to bet, you had to bet the house on if he what it does he get eight before he walks away. Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> I would, I would bet the house that he does. Okay. Gloop, what do you do? What do you have on uh, either? You know, first of all, how long do you think that we're going to see Chad continue to race? Obviously, it's probably the same thing. And then, do you think that he's going to get eight? Could he possibly surpass it? Give us any, 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 anything you want to weigh in uh, for us there. I don't. I don't think you're. I think he's. I think he's going to go as long as he can. Honestly, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I mean, two kids is a completely different story, though. Um, you know, I, I think that's probably the goal in his mind. He's a big, I think he's a big goal setter and can he do it or not? I don't know, but it, it's, I don't think he's going to, you know, go out with just maybe a tie. If he does get that championship, I think he wants to be the number one and on those titles. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that being said, I don't think personally, I don't think we're going to see him quit anytime soon. And do you have a gut feeling? Do you think he's? Do you think he'll get to eight? Uh, I think. I think anything can happen, honestly. Um, and I think there's a lot like, the names that we named throughout this episode could change up a lot of stuff this year. Well, there's a lot of them guys that are going to get better and better. That's why it becomes interesting if some of them other guys take a step forward and make it tougher. Um, so it's not just a two guy fight. Um, that'll be really interesting going forward. Just hard, hard to bet against the guy. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Wrap it up. This is the very last question. I want to get you guys out of here on this note. I can't thank you enough for this, by the way. I love these conversations. Um, simply put, what are you most excited for in 2021? Gloop, I'll let you go first. I am most excited for a somewhat completely different schedule than we've seen. Um, you know, bringing in a, t a couple different races or tracks. Um, I'm sorry, I had it up here. I mean, Three Palms, I can still, I it's considered it's still a new track. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, that's still very new to us. Yep. Um, I'm very excited that we're going back to Briarcliff. Um, I think that place definitely deserved a second chance yes. after it was kind of written off after the year we went there. Agreed. And I'm very excited to see what a lot of these – three, four, five, six guys can do. Mm -hmm. And I think with Thomas being gone, it'll kind of tighten a lot of things up in that area. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And that's what I'm, I'm pretty excited for it, actually. Awesome. Casey, what about you? What are you most excited for for, uh, for this season coming up? I think I'm kind of leaning in the same last thing that Gloop said there, kind of seeing who falls in to mix up that you know, three, four, five, um, as much as I would love to see some guys mix up that one, two, three spot and, and get in there. I think that's exciting. And then just being back at the races last year was such a weird year. Um, it was almost surreal at times with the, the really extended break after, you know, Daytona, you figure last year at this time when we were down here, this whole pandemic was really starting off. And so, um, hoping for some normalcy, um, in this race year 
with all the abnormal things going on with the race schedule, with uh, different tracks and stuff. So excited to be back racing is probably the number one in general that we get to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel like there's so much to, to be excited for. Obviously, like you guys said, just to be back at the races, to, to get back to some normalcy, all those things is obviously exciting. I think it's going to be exciting. So, and all the stuff that, you know, we talked about all these riders stacking up against each other, all these tiers, all these things, there's going to be guys that take steps forward and distance themselves from the riders that we have them, you know, in their grouping right now, there's going to be guys that are better than we expect them to be. I'm excited to see which guys those are. That's what I'm most excited about. Um, so super excited for that. Super excited that, uh, that, uh, the races are right around the corner and super excited that you guys, uh, you know, joined me tonight for this group before we get out of here. Um, I want to ask you, let everybody know, do we know if there's going to be any ways to listen to this race, to watch this race, anything like that? Do we know about anything like that for, for Daytona at this point? I uh, do not think there will be any live broadcast. Okay. Um, I don't really have much to do with that anymore. I'm kind of my okay. own thing. Okay. Um, I know that they didn't plan on staying. Um, okay. And that's, that's a big thing because those guys are on the road for like two weeks straight and that they just, you know, it sounds easy for us to say stay, but I understand. Yeah. So uh, I don't know about that. Um, I do not. I maybe Rodney will be broadcasting something like we've done in the uh, pe- like he's done in the past, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, that'd be Quad Radio. I'm thinking he would be able to hook up something to something like he always does, and yep. we'd be able to listen to it. And you know, you look at your e score at the same time, mm-hmm. or or however it's through. But uh, yeah, no live as of now. I don't think much will change. Okay. Awesome. Well, at least uh, we can hopefully, hopefully get some stuff going there. So at least we can listen. I know in years past I had, you know, Brandy's live stream and e-score and the, the quad radio all going at the same time to um, you know, to kind of get uh, as much, as much coverage as we could get going there. So I wanted to touch on that before I let you guys out of here. Um, can't wait to see how all this is going to shake out. It's going to be so exciting. Uh, all that's left is uh, is to let these guys go racing. So that's going to do it for us guys. I don't think uh, we could have dug any deeper than we did into this 2021 pro class field. Um, you know, now it's time to go racing. And I just want to thank you both for uh, being so gracious with your time. As always, um, it feels good to get back to talking some ATV motocross to have two guys like you both um, who are so inserted, so knowledgeable, um, you know, so eat, sleep and breathe uh, motor ATV motocross. Um, super proud to bring your knowledge and your content and your opinions to our listeners. And uh, next, Next week the first gate drops um it's gonna be really exciting i just can't thank you both enough for for being here with me yeah thank you for having us are you uh taking a little vacation to come down or are you gonna be watching from home man i wanted to um i was just having this conversation because just the other day i was like ready and i'm like man but what if now i got this fantasy thing and being that it's the first time we're doing it i kind of wanted to be like ready if we had any issues whether it was uh you know locking the picks down and all that stuff so um not looking like i'm going to be there for daytona but uh hopefully that means uh you know we got a little more little more money in the bank to go to some more uh, a little later on Gotcha. Side note, if anyone wants to hold my phone and go live on Rip It Up Films, they're welcome to it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, both of you, Casey, you too. I just, uh, can't thank you. Obviously thank you both so much for all you do for our sport. Um, you know, obviously gloop you too, with all the coverage you give us. I mean, there you, you, uh, exponentially multiply all the content we have to, uh, to take in as ATV motocross fans with both of you. I uh, just want to thank you both again for, for joining me here. This was so much fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and I uh, I appreciate you having me on here, and I'd extend the same offer as Gloop. If someone wants to hold my phone, Gloop's got a lot more followers <laughs> with the Rip It Up Films to where, you know, we could get the content out a lot better than on mine, but um, I'd do the same thing. You guys don't want me to hold the phone because it would it would be bad um, <laughs> with the, the cuss words and the and the – Especially now that we got fantasy, ATV fantasy involved in this, it's going to be serious. But uh, again, I mean, all I encourage everyone start your own live feed and go live when you're at the races and you're in the stands there because the more people we touch, the better off we are. And that's what this is all about, Cody. Um, 
I think everyone in the industry can agree that what you've done with this Digging Deep ATV podcast has been exceptional. And we thank you for actually coming up with the idea and, and putting yourself out there to do it. And all the sponsors of the show that have stepped in to help you continue to do this, it's, it's excellent. And uh, glad to have you being the one that's representing us on the public eye. Thanks so much, man. It means a lot. Uh, obviously we put our heart and souls into it. My brother too, who was never super big into the racing thing. And now he wears digging deep. Like it's, uh, like it's his, like it's his own endeavor. He takes a lot of pride in it too. Um, yeah. I mean, thanks to all the people that supported us. And, uh, again, the fantasy thing too. I mean that, um, the way that you guys have supported it, all our listeners, all the people playing it, that obviously makes it a little easy, easier for us to, uh, you know, be able to spend a little more time. It costs money. I, I, the, our biggest endeavor we've ever done was, uh, and most expensive we ever did was creating the, the fantasy league, um, and, you know, paying the people to develop that and, and host it and all that stuff. So, um, that's the biggest thing we ever done. So thanks to everybody that, uh, you know, supported that idea. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously like you too, I love ATV motocross. I love ATVs and ATV racing. And, uh, you know, that's why I am able to justify, uh, you know, spending uh all the time effort and and money i guess to do this but uh yeah so um with that we're gonna call it a wrap thanks uh to both you guys again for joining me um you guys rock and i look forward to getting you both back on soon that's casey greek and gloop mayhe brought to you by our friends at valvoline and yamaha thanks again guys talk soon thank you cody Remember our Wien and Motorsports ad last season where Chad said, enough talk already, let's get out and go ride? Well, that's how I feel. We covered it all. Now it's time to go racing. And all I'm going to say is don't sleep on Chad Wienan. Major thanks to tonight's guests, Gloop Mayhe of Rip It Up Films and Casey Greek of Impact Solutions. Thanks to producer Dallas Jansen, my brother. Thanks to Brooke and AMA official Harv Whipple. Thanks to our sponsors, CST Tires. Go to shop.csttires.com. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Four Works Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Factory 43, Bike Strikes and Quads LLC, and Manscaped to get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Support all the brands that support our show, and don't forget to use those codes to save. Find it all on our website, and be sure to click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner for all of your off-season needs and to help us out. And most of all, thanks to you guys for listening. Our show merchandise, including Digging Deep shirts and hoodies, our new Quad Guys Get Hot Chicks shirts and hoodies, national championship merch, and more are all available at shop.diggingdeepatvmx.com. If you're looking for another easy way to help support us, visit our website and click the Buy Me a Coffee button. This allows you to set up a one-time or monthly contribution to help us out. You can call our voicemail line anytime, 920-569-3519, and follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional content and Digging Deep ATVMX Fantasy Info as Daytona nears. Remember, you can sign up today at atvfantasy.com. You won't want to miss this, especially after all the hype of this episode. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. We're Wherever you find podcasts, you'll find the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. All episodes, additional podcast providers, sponsor links and discount codes, our new show merchandise, fantasy information, and more can all be found on our website, diggingdeepatvmx.com. So check that out today. Again, go to atvfantasy.com to sign up for our Digging Deep ATVMX Fantasy League before the first gate drops at Daytona. Be a friend, tell a friend. Please download, subscribe, rate, review, and share. And with that, for Gloop Mayhee, Casey Greek, Brooke Catherine, Dallas Jansen, and I'm your host, Cody Jansen. Thanks for listening to the number one podcast in ATV racing, 2 million downloads and counting. Until next time, thanks for joining us and digging deep with the stars of ATV Motocross. See you next week. Things are crashing and burning here at the Digging Deep Podcast, much like the Titanic. Those guys were hauling ass, for real.
I remember watching Doug Gus, I don't know who it was, Steel City, running the same times Friday afternoon as James Stewart was on Sunday back then. It was mental. I've never seen quads go that fast. Quad leaders are freaking gnarly. If you're planning to get lucky this St. Patrick's Day, get prepared with Manscaped. Manscaped is the global leader in below-the-waist grooming and an official sponsor of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. To ensure you have the best tools for your family jewels, visit manscaped.com and use discount code DIGGINGDEEP20 for 20% off and free international shipping. Manscaped is here to provide you with the best tools for your grooming experience, offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels. The Lawnmower 3.0 electric trimmer is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. Ceramic blade, advanced skin safe technology, waterproof capabilities, it's simply the best. And Manscaped's performance package is the best buy of 2021. The performance package comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, performance boxer briefs, a travel bag, deodorant, and soothing aloe toner. If you're listening, you know good tools are key. So get the best tools for the job today. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20.